Eternal Father, we thank you today. We thank you for this sport that we love so much, NASCAR. Lord, today we thank you for the beautiful weather that you're giving us today. We thank you for each and every driver. Lord, we ask you to cover and protect them. Thank you for their families. Thank you for all personnel. Lord, we thank you for our military personnel around the world. Bless our men and women in God that serve our country. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our country today. We give you all the credit. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. And here to honor America, please welcome 2016 American Idol and Big Machine Records recording artist Trent Harmon as he performs our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the One hundred and twentieth Richmond Sprint Cup race. The last three have been dominated by one driver. Which driver will it be today? And good to see you for the Toyota owners. 400 aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track and on the road. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. 400 laps, 300 miles. Carl Edwards won last week at a Toyota. He's won back to back five times in his career. We'll be watching him closely. Jimmy Johnson, a two time winner this year, hasn't led a lap in the last three races, but he was fastest in final practice and he's won here before at Richmond. Kevin Harvick has won three times. More top 10 finishes here for him than at any other track. And Harvick is on the pole. Will a favorite win today? or a long shot or Tony Stewart in his first race back of this season in his swan song season. Interesting comments as he said he wouldn't change uh, his temperament his comments and he's not going to change his driving style. Let's head back down to the track for the command. Race fans it's time for the most famous words in motorsports here to give the command for today's Toyota owners 400 welcome loyal Toyota owner and VIP customer of Mechanicsville Toyota Robert Dell Wilson. Drivers start your engine. <laughs> And let's head upstairs to Jeff Gordon, Darrell Waltrip, and Mike Joy. Gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Robert Wilson gave the command. He's as excited as we are to have racing back on Sunday, the traditional race day here at Richmond, for the first time since 1997. Now, last year's race was run on Sunday because it rained out on Saturday night. Jeff, how will today be different? Yeah, well, there's a different aero package this year and a different Goodyear tire. We saw yesterday in practice, these drivers were taking these cars all the way to the wall, this tire really lays down a lot of rubber grip goes away fast and we're going to see these drivers really managing that grip level here today so a lot of unknowns and the yeah. driver's mindset when you know you're going to be slip sliding away all day well you, you're nobody's car is going to handle great 
You just got to hope yours is better than everybody else's. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. The lesser of all the evils, you know. But the unknowns are, are, are something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Because this tire, it does go fast for a few laps, but gives up a lot. So the cars are going to be all over the racetrack, and that's going to be fun to watch. As good as Bristol was over previous Bristols, is this race going to be that much better than last year's Richmond? Oh, I, I think it'll be a pretty exciting race because there's a lot of cars that got a lot of practice. We didn't qualify. We just oh. practiced. That makes the race cars better for the race. All right. A lot of unknowns and a lot of excitement ahead. Fourteen drivers entered here have won, but only three of them have won in the daytime. Fox Sports welcomes you to Richmond for the Toyota Owners 400 race nine in the Sprint Cup Series for 2016. Here's a look at your Geico starting grid set by practice times after qualifying was washed out. Kevin Harvick three time Richmond winner Joey Logano a winner here in 2014. Jimmy Johnson two of his three Richmond wins came in the daytime. Carl Edwards winner last week won here in fall of 13. Denny Hamlin two time Richmond winner. Brad Keselowski, winner September 14. Kurt Busch won last year, and Casey Kane got his first cup win here. Have a look at the rest of our starting grid as uh, we get on the dial -a phone Yeah, let's dial up Jamie McMurray. Hey, Jamie, this is Jeff Gordon up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me? Yeah, I'm clear, Jeff. Well, yesterday in practice, we saw this track really wide now. A lot of rubber laying down with these Goodyear tires. You're starting 27. You're going to need a lot of multiple lanes here. Uh, what's your plan? Well, I think the bottom is the preferred groove, but the fact that the track is getting wider, or it was wider in practice, will give you some options. I expect the leader to be on the bottom. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, definitely got wide practice, and I think you'll have to use uh, every single one of those lanes. Well, it certainly was exciting yesterday. We hope to see some more of that today. Good luck coming up through there. Have a good one. Yeah, 10 -4. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Larry McReynolds has today's Toyota Racing Development Race Analysis. Yeah, Mike, it's one of those days where you better have speed for short runs and long runs because we absolutely will have both. Now for our race analysis, 400 laps around this three-quarter mile track, pit road speed 40 miles per hour. Remember our track grip level from one to five, grip level three, probably going down as the days goes on. Clint Boyer had to change the transmission. Matt, he goes to the rear of the field. Well, Larry Mack, when you look at Tony Stewart, he spent a lot of time in 2016 listening to the team radio, but by listening, he's also learned a lot about Mike Bugaravich's communication skills and management smile. He's only asked for a few tweaks to bug his style on the radio, just how much information he passes along and what Tony really wants to know. Today is the big test. Jamie Little? Well, one week ago, Carl Edwards and crew chief Dave Rogers won their first cup race together. So how will that help them now moving forward, knowing they're locked into the chase? Well, Dave told me it's all about pit road. He can take more risk now, and that freedom to do so starts today. Vince Welch. Kurt Busch dominated this race en route to victory a year ago, but a lot has changed. A new tire and a new aero package. So Kurt tried three different setups this weekend. Wouldn't you know, they came right back to the race winning setup from last April. Same setup, they hope the same result. Thanks, Vince. Going to add one lap, and then we're ready to go. It is a cloud-free, beautiful day in Richmond. It's like the Bristol weather moved right on over here. A little cooler here, 66 degrees. Track temperature, all asphalt, 116 degrees. The pit boxes are concrete. Look at that curving pit road that they will have to deal with. And look at those white lines on the track. Not so much in turns one and two, but in three and four, they were way up above the second white dotted line in practice. Leading the field, the 2016 Toyota Camry Hybrid SE is today's pace car as NASCAR goes green. And we're ready to race. How you feeling, Jeff? Kind of excited? I'm extremely excited. We got Tony Stewart back in the field. A day race here at Richmond. This place falls off. I can't wait to see multiple groove racetrack. How high will they go? 
We're about to find out. Yes, sir. Flagman's got that green flag in his hands. Looking to feel over the green flags in the air. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys, and Danica. Harvick will lead the first lap from Jimmy Johnson outside pole sitter Joey Logano doing a little slipping and sliding up in that high lane. Yeah, Logano got a terrible start. He just didn't get off here good on the start, but uh, fighting back on the outside there with Denny Hamlin. Yeah, Harvick had a great jump and, and Logano fell back. But when he went into turn one on that first corner, he dove in there and it just <laughs> didn't stick. Trying to make up for what he lost. <laughs> Single work. file, the first eight back through Kyle Busch. Then Austin Dillon with Casey Kane side by side, and it's uh, double wide from there on. You know, Jimmy Johnson, I've never heard, or it's been a while since I've heard him that happy about his race car in the setup. I know I, I, already in second place. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do here with Kevin Harvick. But what he said to Chad, he said, are you sure we're in Richmond? <laughs> <laughs> Matt Kenseth right behind them in 11th. Then A.J. Allmendinger already on the outside, and Kyle Larson with him. Yeah, we saw multiple lanes in practice yesterday. You know, sometimes that happens in practice as they're laying rubber down and we won't see as much of, of it in the race. But we also saw it in Xfinity race. Uh, it widened out a little bit. I think these cars, as they run more and more laps here, you will start to see them search around. Oh, I think you will. Right now, Jeff, it, it's kind of like you want to get yourself in a zone. You kind of want to see what the car is going to do, how it feels. They may have made a few changes overnight. Feel the car out before I really get aggressive here. This group was three wide two laps ago in turn two before things sorted out just a bit. And the other thing, Mike, because the way the tires are falling off the speed, when we say fall off, we mean the speed goes away. You're going to want to conserve a little bit and not use all your stuff up right here on the drop of the green. Carl Edwards up to fifth. Now that Carl has a win in his pocket, can he just go for broke? I hear that every week once you win a race, heard it from Denny Hamlin and others. I don't like that strategy. I say you win every week. You go with what got you here. And that experimenting around, I just, I don't like to get too far off of what got me here. Ryan with Chase Elliott. Now I did a little taste the test. I got to tell you, I, uh, Baja Blast versus the uh, Pitts Black. Sorry, Chase. It's the one time I'm not on your side, but <laughs> I, I really like that Pitts Black. But I like what he's doing here on the racetrack on the outside. Nobody's working the outside better than Chase Elliott so far from what I've seen. I know he started deep in the field, but he's doing an excellent job using that outside to his advantage, getting a big run up off the corner. I think, Jeff, he's one of those guys that gets in a rhythm. He gets in the car, he gets to going, and he gets, gets a little faster. I think it gets that confidence. Car's good, I'm good, and here we go. Seventh place, Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, a couple of fellows who know how to win here. Pre-race got a glimpse of a Prince sticker on Kyle Busch's car. Oh. As we remember the purple one. Great innovator. Wow, great music. Now we're back at 25th place. Jamie McMurray battling Paul Menard. Yeah, because qualifying rained out and we went off of practice speed, some uh, teams chose to do more race runs than qualifying runs, so it really shuffled them up, and that's where we're starting to see uh, some come forward is back here and around this 20th, 25th place finish. Here comes Carl. I tell you, uh, watching Carl Edwards, he's a little bit better than Denny Hamlin right now. Of course, they're teammates. I don't think Denny will put up too tough a fight, but you know, there's nothing more important and better than the momentum that Carl brings in here from that win last week, Jamie. And that's right, momentum's everything. But DW, what you were talking about, about strategy now that they're in the chase, Dave Rogers told me every week I bring the best setup, something that's capable of winning. We don't have time to experiment. We're always bringing the best. And that's why he mentioned Pit Road, that that's a place now he could be more aggressive than he would before if they weren't locked in. Yeah, I, Jamie, I'm great with that. If you want to do something like that, but let's keep the car under me. Don't get my car messed up and get me out somewhere where I can't get back. In second place, Jimmy Johnson's been hunting for grip. This time he exits turn four right on the yellow line. The last lap he was way up there on the outside of the 
White to the dotted line. Yeah, we saw that 48 in practice. Yeah, remember, he was one of the guys that was really, I mean, right out next to the wall running his practice laps. Well, you know, we've not run a lot of laps, 12 laps already, and we've already seen over a second fall off in lap times from lap one or their fastest lap to laps now. So I think Jimmy was feeling the grip level falling off, and he said, hey, maybe this is a good time to move up top and see if I can't make some gains on Kevin Harvick. A little brotherly love here. Vince? You know, it's interesting as you talk about the grip drop off. Kurt Busch told me, he said he really noticed it most significantly at lap 25. He said, then you get another drop off about lap 30, and then lap 40, he said, they're just gone. So you're noticing it right away. He said they really will notice it at 25. So keep an eye on, an eye on that 10 laps from now. Well, he ran by far the most laps in practice. Yeah, he had three setups they wanted to try. They had three distinctively different setups, and I don't know which one they ended up with, but that was why they ran so Whoa. many practice laps. Look where Jimmy Johnson and Joey Logano and Brad Kozlowski are. They are way upstairs in turns three and four. Yeah, it seems like maybe the bottom in one and two, the top in three and four seems to be the preferred line that some of these uh, drivers are trying. Matt Yoakum, you have something? When you look at Jimmy Johnson, three wins here at Richmond on his resume, but he's been winless the last 14. And you heard just his optimism during practice on how good that car is. Chad Canales told me either way the bounds turn, Jimmy could drive through it. Whether it was tight or loose, they feel pretty confident about the entire 400 laps here today. Well, now he tries the high line down in turn two. Here's what they're talking about on Channel 48. Really just like to drive off from initial tip in and look at two wide open. Tip four. Don't be afraid to drop your panel bar a little bit. Tip four. Start at a half down. I've come down to the seven tenths. The last time I saw somebody here that far up the racetrack, they were in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's early. <laughs> yeah, keep watching. It's early. <laughs> 17 laps complete. Kevin Harvick has led them all so far.
Jimmy Johnson giving a new meaning to high wide and handsome. Here at Richmond he has the lead from Kevin Harvick by eight tenths of a second. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. came up on A.J. Allmendinger who was trying to hang on to the top. Watch the 47 left of your screen and that's the 88 just behind him. Yeah, not everybody's cars handling real good right now. Some of them are just a little wee bit loose and they really get loose when you get a little tap like that. Let's see. <laughs> Junior got loose getting into the corner. Clear, clear, clear. But Amendinger decided to what we call diamond the racetrack, and in the middle of the corner, he decided to turn down to get a straight shot off. But unfortunately, Dale Jr.'s front bumper was right there in the way. Yeah, AJ made a questionable decision right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. Now we listen to Jimmy Johnson and Chad Canals talking about the driver track bar adjustment. Yeah, let's use our Ford cutaway car to explain what they were talking about there. And this right here, that's the driver adjustable track bar button. He can press that button and raise it up. He can lower it right there. Now let's go to the rear of our cutaway car. This is actually the automatic adjuster. That's the little motor that's turning it. And that's where he's going to be adjusting that track bar. You can move it up to help the car to rotate or you can lower it to tighten the car up. Sounds like they'll be playing with that track bar a lot today, guys. Absolutely, Larry. The balance changes so much during a run because of how much uh, fall off in speed and the tires aren't actually wearing that much. They just lay a lot of rubber down to give up speed. But that track bar adjusters, it's a great tool to have. You know what I love about this 48 car today? That's how he practiced yesterday. Remember we said kind of out of character, see him running up next to the wall the way he was and he's one of the few that did it. He's one of the first ones to do it. Look where he is today. He's utilizing what he learned in practice. Now a lot of drivers are trying that high groove. As we ride along with Denny Hamlin, Matt. Mike DW touched on a peaks and valleys is the 2016 story for Denny Hamlin, a win at Daytona and a pair of thirds. Other than that, though, he's been struggling. They've been trying a lot of different things throughout this year. Expectations high coming back here because he runs so well. Right now, though, the car is just way too free through the center of the corner, which is opposite of what he dealt with in practice. You know, man, I just think that uh, his crew chief, they call him Wheels. Mike Wheel, I think he needs to let him get his legs under him, get his wheels under him, if you will, and not be experimenting. They won Daytona, but let's, let's win. Richmond is my home track. Let's go there and let's win this race. I know, but they've already got a win. They've got an opportunity to risk it and, and learn something. They want to win a championship, not just the next race. Can't get that four out of out in left field. Though. Everybody's hunting for grip. Now watch Jeffrey Earnhardt in the 32. He's 38. He's gone way up high in three and four and one and two, just trying to find the best grip and give him a consistent ride through this green flag run that's gone the th first 33 laps of this race. I mean, it appeared to me when I was watching the front of his car just doesn't want to turn. He goes into the corner and he's almost locking the brakes up, trying to slow the car down to get the front tires to cut and turn. Right now, Jeff, we're all, we're right at a 24 second lap around here. That's two and a half seconds off of the fast lap earlier today. What so, I'm really anxious to see is whether this top groove is going to maintain. Usually as you lay rubber, the grip is better as you get to cleaner racetrack. As you lay rubber, all of a sudden now you've got the same grip level, but a longer lap and they start to gravitate back towards the middle or bottom of the racetrack. But that hasn't happened so far. And now all the top 10 drivers except Hamlin, Kurt Busch, and Keselowski are way up in that high groove. This is fun to watch. You're watching Fox NASCAR.
Beat Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Quality Guaranteed. And by Toyota. Let's go places. 43 laps complete. A lot going on here with Jimmy Johnson out in front of Carl Edwards by a second. Austin Dillon just passed Joey Logano for ninth place as Logano fades to 10th. And how high is too high? Ask Casey Kane. Watch the five. Yeah, it looks like he's behind the 22 and maybe just lost a little bit of air. Maybe he just got to the gas a little early, got outside the gray, brushed the wall. Yeah, there is a little bit of debris, you know, tire debris or, you know, dust out there. And so he found the, the grip limit, which was right there coming off of turn four. But it hadn't hit, I'm watching him. It hadn't hurt the car a bit. He's still running good lap times. And uh, I think he just kind of, you hear that scrape. I don't think he really bent anything up that badly. I agree. I'm curious what's wrong with Joey Logano for 15 laps. That car was fast and then the fall off began and he's fallen from the outside pole to 10th. We've been seeing that, Mike, this year. Last year, those cars, the two and the 22, they raced really, really well. They were really fast in the race. This year, they've lost something. I'm not sure what it is, but they just haven't got the race speed that they've had in the past. Carl Edwards has come to second, passing pole sitter Kevin Harvick. Vince? Well, Kevin led the first lap, in fact, led the first 21. He's led laps in every race except the Daytona 500. But the car just got too loose, too loose on entry, too loose on exit, reminding him to work the track bar inside, but just doesn't quite have the handle on that car right now. Tony Stewart started 18th. Ran right around 18th. Currently, he is 21st. How's it going his first race back? That's what we wanted to hear. Uh, yeah, Fantastic. Yep. Tony is a great, I'll tell you, he's so much fun. He so, himself. You know, getting back a little bit to this track bar, you have to be careful here. You get loose in, you get loose off where they're looking for drive off, but the center, turning the center is so critical to your drive off here and the speeds that you need to run. Lap, good oh. lap time. And boy, if you get that track bar down too much, you start getting too tight in the center. And Tony just got <laughs> squeezed. He, <might> he was <laughs> the hot dog in the bun between Almondinger and uh, who was that, Chase Elliott? Yeah, Chase Elliott. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was, was yeah. Hey, welcome back. That was the, <laughs> that was the rock between two hard places yes, right it there. Was. I think he was having more fun right there than he has already the whole race. Heck I mean, yeah, he, he loves saved, that. He saved it. <laughs> now we talked about Joey Logano. Uh, he's now under fire from Dale Earnhardt Jr. and may lose 10th spot as Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch for third place there. Well, let's get an update on Logano, Vince. Mike, it's interesting. You know, you noted that he fired off really well. Crew chief Todd Gordon told me today, said, we actually set our car up more for the short run as compared to the long run, which you hear throughout the garage. He said, we believe you've got to really fire off good and then have enough in the long run to hang on. He said, but we find it's more important over the course of the race and to win the race if you've got a short run car. He said, but if it goes long run, we're going to pay for it with some spots, and you're seeing that now. Yeah, right now he's a half lap down. Yep. At uh, 52 laps, he's a half lap down. Kyle Busch on the bottom. Josh Wise, the 30 just ahead. Harvick challenging. Yeah, Turn this, two. This is a great battle for third right here between Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch. The racing is amazing. This is the best racing I've seen at Richmond in years. I mean, they are all over this racetrack. Usually at this racetrack, historically, when you hear three wide, the next thing you hear is cautions Caution. out. Will it crank? <laughs> Look are at you, this. You all right? <laughs> Carl Edwards coming, hunting the lead from Jimmy Johnson, who leads on a short track for the first time since two years ago at Martinsville. Now we're starting to see Carl search around some different lines. He's been running sort of right through the middle. Towards the bottom, Jimmy's really been working that high lane. But as we saw that last time through three and four, Carl Edwards moved up high as well. Jeff, I really like that 19 car, and I'll tell you why. Jimmy seems to be committed to the top, and that's where he's been. That 19 seems to be able to go where he wants to. If he got to go high, got to go low.
got a really good race car yeah, right he now can compared go to everybody else. He can go anywhere he wants. That is a good sign. Lapping Regan Smith. See right there here, he right through the middle he goes. Gets good acceleration off the corner. You can see right there though, there was some wheel spin. He he got in the gas, he got a little bit, uh, he anticipated a little bit too much. Back of the car came around. I love that, man. I love overheads. It, it just yep. shows you so much. Shows you the cars where they are on the track. You just see so much more when you're looking down on them like that. Here. Side by side for the lead. We listened in on the 19. All righty. Let's settle in. Set our eyes on that 48. Drive right up the board. Get your mark here. That 48 looks a little bit loose in a lot of rear brake or something. You stay smart. You'll run about. Ran a 410. You ran a 390. Now, traffic. We've never had a three-lane racetrack at Richmond, so there is no protocol as to where the lap cars go. Do they stay on the bottom? Do they run up top? We've got some of each. Well, you know, when you're lapping someone, you hope they hold their line. Don't make any erratic moves. Stay where you're supposed to be, and 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 then go. Then you want to go where they're not. Well, and you're also you're looking out ahead of you, so you're trying to anticipate when you get to that car where they're going to be and where you can make your move. You're looking for where their weaknesses are. So you saw there, Jimmy Johnson. He knew the 21 car of Ryan Blaney was going to go the high side. He went to the middle. Big pack of traffic ahead. Reed Sorensen on the inside, the 55. Chris Buescher ahead, Jeffrey Earnhardt up on the top of the racetrack. Last week you talked about pick and rolls. Carl Edwards is trying to do that right here with Ryan Blaney using him as a lap car to get inside of Jimmy Johnson. Boy, Carl, uh, uh, Jimmy got in there nice, made a nice move. Landon Castle in the middle of that as well. Put a little bit of distance between he and Carl Edwards. And now back at fourth place, Denny Hamlin against Kevin Harvick. 11 cars looking pretty racy today, boys. 59 caution free laps. Complete at Richmond, Jimmy Johnson, Carl Edwards. Carl Edwards worked, worked, worked. Jimmy Johnson got alongside him, dropped back in line, and then two laps ago, this happened. Yeah, Jimmy just gets a little bit loose right here. Yep. 
Carr got takes a little, advantage of it. Little sideways. Kept putting that pressure on him, Jeff. Kept laying and hanging in there and got him. That's fun. Looks really cool on TV, man. Really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie? Well, I talked to Dave Rogers this morning, and he told me he didn't think they were going to be as good as last week when they had the pole and they won the race. He also told me he expected Carl to be barking early in the race, meaning he wouldn't be happy with the race car. All Carl has said is it's a little loose, and you heard there, he's having fun. I think they're a little bit better than they anticipated. Leading's always fun. He's led four laps, Jimmy 43 and Harvick 21. Now, we've talked about another battle today, and that's Decision 2016. Casey Kane for Mountain Dew Pitch Black, Chase Elliott for Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Dale Jr. is the undecided delegate. Go online, cast your vote for your driver's flavor today, and help Dale Jr. decide which flavor stays on your supermarket shelf. See, I like my flavor, not only the way it tastes, but I, I like the, where he's running. Sixth place, Casey's having a great day. Kind of, kind of, but pitch black, I like the name. Yeah. Meanwhile, Joey Logano, uh, with that short run car, as we were told earlier, is now the third to last car on the lead lap in 25th place, just ahead of Casey Mears and Paul Menard. And that close to going a lap down. This is the longest that they've run since we've been here. We've seen some 25, 30 lap runs in practice, but never have we gone this far. And I think the, the, the grip has just gone away a lot further. And the balance has gone much further off for the 22. Guys, if you remember at the top of the show, I talked about the importance of a long run and a short run. And we have both because when I look at the last 10 spring races here, our longest green flag run is an average of 103 laps. So we have both normally in this race. Good point. Seventh place, how about Ricky Stenhouse? One of the fastest among the top 10, the last 10 laps or so. So definitely to Larry's point, a long run car. Yeah, definitely a long run car. Plus he loves to work that high line. And you know, he's a great race car driver when it comes to car control, especially at sliding a car around when it's really loose and the grip goes away. So this is definitely falling right into his wheelhouse. Yeah, I think I think overall the Roush cars are definitely much better than they have been. I mean, you look at Trevor Bain, even he right now is running. Uh, he's running 14. Trevor is after a great run at Bristol last week. And now here's the 17 car moving forward. Biffle 13th, Bain 14th, so all the Roush Fenway cars in the top 15. There is Matt DiBenedetto. It says Guido above the door. That's his middle name. Uh, they had a little fun with him on online. NASCAR Chasm inventing some names for his group of fans. Do you call them DiBenedetto heads? Do you call them a flock of syllables? <laughs> uh, DeBaga Donuts? I don't know. Jamie. <laughs> I don't think he cares as long as you're talking about him, right? I talked about right before he got in the car, and he said this week has been magical, but probably the coolest thing to him that happened was Dale Earnhardt Jr. tweeting about him and the kind of guy he is and congratulating him. He said it's been magical. It feels like they won the race and he told me he felt like they had a top 15 car for today. Yeah, his partner Ron Devine, I mean, great guy and he's invested a lot in this sport and it's, I'm glad to see Ron and that team get some good, get a good uh, run like that too. And Ron's from Northern Virginia. This is a home race uh, for BK Racing. Matt's from California. His family, they moved the whole family to Hickory, North Carolina to further his racing career. I love what Ron and those guys are doing there at BK Racing, Daryl. That's David Reagan there. He's in the top 20. He's driven up to 19th, still on the lead lap, showing some really good long run speed in that 23 car. These are some of the cars they bought from Michael Waltrip Racing at the end of last year. They're tweaking on them, tuning them, and Toyota's helping them with some wind tunnel support. So things are going well for this organization. It's great to see because they put a lot into it. I agree, Michael. Ron's a great guy. Second place, Kyle Busch putting on the dog as he chases down Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, I think right now the only thing Carl might be getting nervous about is who's getting ready to move into second. I, th I think it's going to be a great day for that 18 car. And I'll tell you why, he didn't race yesterday. He's all rested up. He's <laughs> raring to go. I don't know. I've seen him run those Xfinity races. It's not holding back at all on Sunday. You know something else I didn't know about him? He's got 32 wins at Gibbs and a championship. Tony Stewart has 33 wins and two championships. Kid is goal-driven. He wants to be the best it's ever been at Gibbs Racing. 80 laps complete next time by 
Carl Edwards and Kyle Busch out front. Fans enjoying the race on a beautiful sunny day at Richmond. The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Decision 2016. Two flavors, one stays. You decide. Vote at Decision.com today. 87 laps complete for Carl Edwards leading teammate Kyle Busch. Joe Gibbs Racing has won half the short track races since 2009. For a limited time, switch to Sprint. Save 50% on most Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile rates. Sprint better for less. Ryan Blaney has made a pit stop and that opens the pit window. Brad Keselowski's been in. Here's Eric Almarola, Martin Truex making their stops along with Chris Buescher. Jeff, if these guys, they ought to be happy. They've been wanting tires to fall off. They've fallen almost three seconds since the start of this race. Yeah, now they're happy they're on, if you're on pit road. They want new tires. They want to get back the grip that they had at the beginning of this run. Kevin Harvick will be the first of the lead group to make a stop as he rolls on to pit road along with Kurt Busch. A long looping pit road here. Takes a long time under green flag condition. With the premium spots down toward turn one and Carl Edwards coming as well. Tony Stewart is in. There's David Reagan and more Vince. The 41 of Kurt Busch. Kurt just looking for a little bit more drive off. Said he wants to roll the center better. Also, the four of, J of Kevin Harvick. It's going to be four tires, a chassis adjustment. He also got into the wall, so he needs a little help there on the repair. Jamie? Well, Edwards led 25 laps today. Said he was just a little bit loose all around. A four-tire stop, air pressure, and wedge for Carl Edwards. 
Taylor Earnhardt Jr. not too happy with Trevor Bain's pit road speed. He pushed Bain halfway down pit road to get to his box. Yeah, in these first sections, it's on an arc. You can actually increase your pit road speed a little bit there because you won't break that time limit and, uh, and be speedy. And so it looked like Bain wasn't pushing as far as Jr. Matt. And a chassis adjustment. You can see the wrench in the back window for Kyle Busch. The only real complaint he had earlier in the run, he had a brake vibration. Then he turned down the brake fans. That went away. Meanwhile, the 48 guys are up on the wall waiting for Jimmy to hit his box. The 38 of Landon Castle leaves. Jimmy comes in. Two of his three wins here at Richmond came when the races were run during the daytime. Non-scheduled events. Chassis adjustment completed on both sides. Now, Jimmy was saying that the biggest thing that he needs Canals to fix is drive off. The car is way too free. Matt Kenseth assumes the lead, and now when he comes to pit road, that will be all the lead lap cars having been to the pits with Kenseth's stop. Mike, I don't know how fast the 19's pit stop was or right here directly in front of me, but it was lightning fast. I, I guarantee you it could have been over 11 seconds. Momentum. How many lug nuts do you think that they took four on? I told you, four <laughs> on, four off. Yeah. <laughs> Start a new company. <laughs> The only driver who has not pitted is Ryan Ellis driving the BK Racing number 93 and making his second cup start. So he's toward the tail end of the lead lap. The young driver from Ashburn, Virginia, as we watch the sixth place battle among Hendrick Chevy teammates. Yeah, just before the, the pit stop, we really saw Casey Kane starting to reel in Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy was starting to fade. And now here they are battling it out on new tires. This is all happening eight and a half seconds behind Carl Edwards, who has retaken the lead. I think Jimmy has to decide whether or not he wants to push really hard at the beginning of this run because he obviously has a good car for you know 60, 70 laps. But then we saw after that, that's when he really started to fall off. We saw Casey Kane had a really good long run car. So you got to be careful here how much you battle and fight one another for this position. But also track position, as we all know, is always important. And one thing that happened on that cycle of green flag stops, I thought this was going to go on. Keselowski was the first driver kind of up toward the front to hit pit road. And look where he's running now. He's running third. Doesn't sound like a big gain, but remember, he gained about two and a half seconds on that additional lap that he came on to pit road earlier. Good Larry, point. And, I, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. And you talked about uh, the speed of the 19 team. Carl had a one second lead when that pit cycle began. His lead doubled with that stop. I, it was, he got in the pits, great, great stop. And then the opposite of that is Kenzit. He waited to come down pit road. Now he's lost a lot of speed, uh, uh, track position. So Carl Edwards leads. Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, Denny Hamlin, and Kevin Harvick coming up on 100 laps.
104 caution free laps so far and three distinct racing grooves have given the fans a great show today at Richmond International Raceway. Carl Edwards leading Kyle Busch by two seconds. Denny Hamlin three back, Brad Keselowski five, Kevin Harvick nine and a half, and Jimmy Johnson ten. Or your top half dozen. We still have 21 cars on the lead lap, the last of which is Danica Patrick. Let's go to 13th place and get a nationwide Dale Jr. performance report from Matt. And Mike, speaking to Greg Ives earlier today, he felt like this was going to be a good opportunity for them to finally score their season's first win three times. They have finished second. Junior's car is so good on long runs, and he excels at trying to save those tires. Right now, though, the car is just way too free on entry, and even looser off some significant adjustments, both chassis and especially air pressure, to try to fix it after that first stop. What's these cars look like? Somebody on the beach with a metal detector all over the what? place can't find anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you were going that. Hey, yo, look there. I see one level one guy. He's, he's low. He's up high. You're good today. We're going out to dinner Friday night more often. <laughs> what, one of the things I really like about this type of, of, of race and the, when the tires fall off like this and different pit strategies, if you come in a lap or two before another car, you'll fall off sooner as well. And then those tires that uh, came on later, like a Matt Kenseth, all of a sudden they start coming on. So you're gonna see a lot of maneuvering back and forth, different passing and different strategies playing out what better at different times. So Danica one lap down now, that makes her boss, Tony Stewart, the last car on the lead lap in 20th. And. Uh, you notice he was running first, second, and third. No surprise. The Gibbs Toyotas. And a lot of, and some of that's in the pits. Well, I was going to say, I think they're winning on the track and in the pits. You know, it seems to be a real trend for them this year. Uh, there's some teams that know they've got some catching up to do. They're your Toyota top performers. Well, think about it, Jeff. If everybody got the same car and everybody's got the same great driver, you can't do much on the track, so where do you work next? And guys, In those pits. those top three, it wasn't like they pitted early either. In fact, they pitted late in that cycle between lap 90 and 91, talking about our top three right now. Yeah, I mean, I really thought the way Jimmy Johnson fired off and started off this race, he was uh, really going to make them work for it. But ever since they got by him, he really hasn't been able to make up that ground. In the last 47 Richmond races, that's 23 and a half years. This is only the fourth time there has not been a caution in the first 100 laps of the race. We saw this yesterday in the Xfinity race where it went long green flag runs. Great racing. I mean, there's passing all over the track, multiple lanes all the way up to the to the wall on the bottom. I mean, just like we're seeing here. But then there was that late caution and boy, it got wild and crazy. So yep. hold on tight. This thing's uh, this is there's a lot left. Now, Martin Truex was one of the first to pit in that cycle as he battles Dale Jr. for 12th place. Junior was in three laps after Truex, so he's got three laps fresher tires, and they're pulling down on Matt Kenseth, who was one of the last, he was the last of the leaders to pit. Junior has finished better than he started, I think, just about every race this year. They, they don't always have the best practice and the best qualifying, but man, on Sunday, they get that thing dialed in, just like last week. Two laps down when the race started, came home second. And we hear him complain through practice and talk about all the different adjustments and details of what's going on with the car. But then when it comes time to uh, to move forward in the race, they seem to find a way there. I think they're a great team. I think he's driving with confidence and they've got good race cars. I sent him a note last night. I said, I got the old broom out, buddy, in case you want to <laughs> use it. That was great to see him win that race yesterday. What a great job he did. And I didn't realize until late in the race when we heard it's the first time that Dale Earnhardt Jr. has won an Xfinity race in a car prepared by Junior Motorsports. Yeah, first the, time he's won for his own team. Oh, I did not when he, know when that. When he won at Daytona in the three car, that was a children's car. Yeah. Jeff, you were asking me during commercial, what do we know about adjustments? It looked like to me, we looked at a lot of stops just then, that everybody was putting wedge in. In other words, trying to help that forward bite off the corner. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like that's what they're really fighting, uh, Larry, is drive off. 
and, and that's what that wedge will do for you and, and, and allow that left rear tire to work a little bit better as you feed the throttle. Won't cause as much uh, wheel spin. Might get them just a little bit of extra momentum off the corner. We don't, we don't have a lot of tools. There's not a lot of things the driver can do, but that track bar and that brake of bias, those two things are very important. Well, since pit stops, Kyle Busch has cut Carl Edwards' lead almost in half. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. By Cialis. And by Chevrolet. Find new roads. 126 laps complete. Chevy Silverado is built with high strength steel for high strength dependability. Silverado, an official vehicle of NASCAR. 126 caution. Three laps in the books. Carl Edwards, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin. Then Kevin Harvick, the first Chevrolet, and Brad Keselowski, the first Ford in the race, fourth and fifth. With a little high-low here for fourth place. Yeah, I think the two cars starting to pay the price for pitting a little bit early, but he's done a, Jeff and I were just, he's done a great job of hanging in there. He's in sixth place, and uh, they made a nice move on that pit stop. Yeah, I mean, that short pitting definitely has its benefits, and it, it's, Right now is when they need that caution to come out for the two, Vince. That's right, they are really tight at uh, the two-third mark of exit, so they're not getting off the corner the way they want. And he said it's loose to the middle and then way tight to the two-third mark. So a little bit on both ends right now for Brad Keselowski. Now he pitted six laps before Jimmy Johnson. He's gone from ninth to third in this uh, cycle. And they know the risk. They, they know exactly what's happening there. They saw the lap times falling off. They said, OK, let's come in and get newer tires and, and get ahead of the cycle and let's make up some time that way. And then maybe hopefully the caution falls right for us. If it doesn't, then they're going to short pit again. They'll keep on that cycle until it works in their favor. Trevor Bay and Ryan Newman battling for 15th here.
close company right there in turn two. That's that seems to be the choke point of this racetrack. Exiting turn two and just ahead of them in 14th Martin Truex Jamie. Well, it's not something we've seen much this year but the 78 just doesn't have much speed. I just talked to the team and he hasn't said if he's loose if he's tight the adjustments really aren't helping but one thing that is different this week after having two loose wheels last week at Bristol they changed in the front the new front tire changer is now Chris Taylor and that last stop was great they made up spots but because they don't have speed he's falling back. This is such a tough racetrack to adjust to because if you try to fix the center of the corner where it's where the car's tight we heard Keselowski talk about how tight he was at that two third mark to get it rotated. Now all of a sudden you're super loose in and super loose off and you don't find the overall gain in speed for the lap. Yeah running that track bar down it, it, it's going to it's going to help you one place hurt you one place might help you get in tighten you up a little bit getting in but then you're going to be too tight getting off so you're constantly working your tools. I saw somebody that wasn't tied off and that was the 44 Brian Scott working the bottom lane down there in three and four in front of Carl Edwards doesn't want to go a lap down or you know and, and boy did that car get sideways. And Jeff you've used that a track bar thing it doesn't instantly go up or instantly go down. I think it moves pretty slow doesn't it. Yeah yeah and it doesn't really work in the corners under load it, it, the motor's not strong enough to do that. So yeah it take you, you can go a few tenths of an inch down each straightaway. Carl Edwards closing in on Tony Stewart trying to put the 14 a lap down. Uh, Stewart holding on to that lead lap spot in his first start of the year. Now a lot has changed since he was last in a cup car last November Matt. Mike Tony Stewart told me the biggest change for him was the new digital dash and learning it. Mike Bugger Ravich took still pictures of the screen pages from Ty Dillon, Brian Vickers, and other teammates to try to get a page that Stewart liked. But as you can see in this drawing, there are several areas that Stewart could not see because of the steering wheel. So this morning, they had to move the data on the page over more on the right side of the screen so that way he could see. Right now, he's just trying to hold on to the next stop. He's trying to save those tires. He felt like he used them up too early on the first run. Yeah, this is one of the issues I have with the digital dash. It can be moved four inches to the left or four inches to the right, but that's it. And when we used to have the analog gauges, you can move and position them just about anywhere you want on that dash to get it perfect for the way you sit in the car and look through the steering wheel. However, those analog gauges didn't weigh over four pounds. That's the weight of that digital dash. So NASCAR pretty much mandates its location. Yeah, I would like to them to give them a couple more inches to the yes. left. <laughs> Sixth place Casey Kane Brad Keselowski 137 laps all green here comes Jamie McMurray 23rd you can see down there the digital dash the way he has it laid out he wants to bring the the analog gauge into the digital world and um, also he wants the digital numbers that, that that are there as well to go off of. Yeah, you can choose an analog gauge display like that. You can choose a bar graph. You can have the numbers uh, numerically. You can have a succession of lights. There are a lot of different ways to do it. We've seen them all. I got a feeling Tony Stewart be a lot like I am. Can you just give me some numbers? <laughs> just give me some numbers. <laughs> well, and I'm sure that was a big learning curve for for him. And as well as you have to flip to a different page when you come down pit road, so it only filters and, and, and analyzes what you're doing on pit road. Then you have to flip back to your normal uh, gauge. Well, think about a pasture car today. I mean, just about every new car has has a screen like that and you have to flip to, you know, to get your radio. You go to one page to get it to do something, go to another. There's several <laughs> pages in, in our street cars today. I've been watching Ricky Stenhouse. I think here's a boy poised for a top five finish today. That car has looked smooth. It's not looked out of shape and everybody he catches he passes. He's a heck of a driver. I can tell you that. I mean, here's a car that dominated this race last year. The 41 of Kurt Busch, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Went right on by him on the outside and is getting ready to get Brad Keselowski maybe coming off this corner. Stenhouse got a lot of drive as he moves in on Keselowski for seven. Mike, we're uh, two seconds exactly off of what the fast lap was. 20, 22 26 fast lap right now at that time by 20, 24 26. And that's why you're seeing cars all over this racetrack. 
when the pace starts to drop that much and you have a track lane rubber or tire lane rubber like we do here at Richmond today, you're going to see these cars fan out everywhere. And, and you know what I like, Jeff? I mean, that's what I like about a day race like this. The track, the weather, those are not, that's not a factor. It's the same for everybody right from the get-go. Sunday is fun day at Richmond, especially for Carl Edwards. He leads Kyle Busch by 1.3 seconds. The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. And by Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. 150 laps, Tony Stewart gives a signal uh, as trying to stay on the lead lap. Most laps led today. Carl Edwards keeps picking them up and putting them down. Now just 18 cars on the lead lap. The Sprint LTE Plus network delivers faster download speeds than other national car carriers. Sprint better for less. Mike, you're talking about Tony Stewart. He put up, a, he he gave uh, Carl Edwards a fit. Carl trying to get around him and lap him. He didn't give up easy. I thought he was going to get it back. He was rolling the bottom a little bit better than Carl while we we're at break and and uh, got ahead of him sort of off a of turn two, but down in three and four is where it looks like Tony's really struggling. And now the last car on the lead lap, another of the BK cars having a strong day, David Reagan and a lot in 18th. Of, a lot of credit to that team and to Michael Waltrip Racing. These cars came out of that stable yep. and that, that has really picked up their performance this year. I talked to Ron Devine. He said they're learning the cars. He said they're totally different than what we had and we're really learning them. We're going to the wind tunnel now. We're getting a little getting some testing time. They're really getting uh, their hands around the whole program. I think so. they learned what they had was not good enough. Oh, they, knew, oh, they, knew, they knew that and I, I credit to Michael. He went over and helped them a lot. And uh, they've really turned the program around. Watch for a battle between Eric Almirola and David Reagan here. If Reagan can get to Almirola as they fight to stay on the lead lap. They're the last two cars, 17th and 18th now. And Trevor Baines right yeah, in the midst of that, too. Say, All three of them wide here. battling to stay on the lead lap. And, you know, if you're a lap car, that's what you want to see. You want to get three wide and block all options for that leader. <laughs> there you so go. They don't get anything to hold him back. Now Carl, that's a break for, Carl, uh, for uh, Kyle Busch because uh, seeing the double wide in front of the leader allows him to close 
right up to his teammate, first and, and second. And Mike, not very far behind him is the 11 car. He's catching both of them as well. So those first three Gibbs cars, Toyotas, are looking pretty racy today. Now behind Denny Hamlin, first Chevrolet in the race is the number four, a pole sitter Kevin Harvick in fourth. Vince? Well, Harvick is much better this run than he ended up being at the tail end of that uh, initial run before the pit stop. He was on the splitter pretty hard at the beginning of this run. He said, but once the pressures have come up, the car has gotten much better and has stayed better throughout the course of the run compared to the previous run. So good news for Harvick, still starting to move forward a little bit. Thanks, Vince. We're at 156 laps, all of them under green. The leaders pitted be and caution is out for debris. Ends my question to Larry of when will the next pit stop come? How about now? Right now, four <laughs> tires, fill her up with fuel. Gosh. Uh, somewhere near the Smithfield sign on the back straightaway, there's a piece of debris. And I believe hey, David Reagan bacon. had just gone a lap down, so uh, I, if I had to guess, he's our free pass car. We'll verify that with scoring. Depends on the moment of caution. It is David Reagan. First yellow all day long at 157 laps. I think Michael may say that's a great job of David Reagan to stay in that position to be able to get that lap back. Pit, nice job. Pit roads open this time. Carl Edwards will lead them down. Longest green flag run to start the race since 1979. Jamie. And Carl Edwards said that wedge adjustment on the last stop hurt him just a bit through the center mostly, but the drive off was better. Air pressure adjustment, a four tire stop for the 19. Matt. Danny Hamlin in, you can see the wrench in the back window. They're gonna make a chassis adjustment. His car just needed to turn better earlier in the run through the center. Meanwhile, his teammate, Kyle Busch on the bottom of your screen. The car's loose in, loose off, but he felt like they were making some gains. Chassis adjustment again on the 18, Vince. We just told you the four car lasted a lot better on that run. They're still gonna take a quarter round out of the right rear. Four tires for Kevin Harvick. Kyle Busch wins the advanced auto parts race off pit road, second to first. Now Denny Hamlin came out third, but had a little drama on his stop right there. <laughs> Thing must be hot.
The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light. Raise one to right now. First caution of the day for debris in the back straightaway, and we have a full round of caution flag pit stops. Let's compare Carl Edwards, who was at the leader at the time, with Denny Hamlin's stop on the top. Oop, tire rolls away. Has to chase it and then get back into position to finish up. What it looked like on the stopwatch was a difference of 1.2 seconds between the pit stops. And here's channel 19. I'm sorry, I've got a left front of the fender there. Just uh, one of those racing deals. We'll get it back next time. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. No big deal. I, I kind of might have the wheel turned a little bit, too. Let me know. Uh, he says it's my fault. Since this setup would put it in, not the driver. Bell of play. Yeah, it's always a rough on me. No coming, no slide. <laughs> <laughs> They're having so much fun. They are having fun. He's feeling you. good, but he he brought up a good point. You got to hold that wheel perfectly straight for those tires to come off. And, and and we saw right there, you have to do everything just right, or you could possibly miss that tire coming around the corner, ruin the whole thing. Tuesday, MLB is back with a game you can only see on FS1. Matt Carpenter and the Cards head to the desert to take on Paul Goldschmidt. And the Diamondbacks, 9 p.m. Eastern on FS1 or watch live on Fox Sports Go. Couple right. of issues on pit road this time. Uh, the right rear air gun broke on Kurt Busch's pit stop. They were a little slower. And two penalties. Denny Hamlin and Chris Busher both having tires get away from the crew on the way back to the wall. Mike, real quick, we always put a piece of tape on our steering wheel. You'll see it on most of these cars. I have a piece of orange tape on the steering wheel to tell you that you have your wheel straight. And that's uh, really useful when you come down pit road and get in your pit box. Yeah, the driver plays a significant role in those pit stops. Everything he does, everything the pit crew does, all those are crucial. Coming green this time to begin lap 165 of 400. Carl Edwards spins the tire as Kyle Busch gets away. Yeah, Carl just didn't go. Well, Jimmy Kyle Johnson did. right after him. <laughs> yeah, Kyle got away just fine. Now, I remember one time here when Carl went too quick. <laughs> Cost him. Boy, that was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, bud. Nice and smooth now. He'll come back to you. That, of course, was Carl. Three wide. I think these guys all know the urgency. Oh, There's yeah. an urgency right here of passing people while you're on pretty good tires and you got them all in front of you because you're going to get strung out here in a minute and it's going to be harder. Saw Dale Earnhardt oh, Jr. Boy. getting in the back of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. said, hey man, I, I want through here. I got a fast race car on the short run. Ooh, Jr. Oh no, that's Chase. Chase was. Easy now, three wide. Stupid ahead. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. That's not going to work. Oh my gosh. You know. I've never seen toothpaste squeezed back into the tube before. I think Whoa. we just did. Man, that was close. You love the action here right after restarts. Yeah, we saw this with Chase Elliott at the beginning of the race. His car works really good on the outside. It has really good short run speed, but really fell off as you see him. Man, just he just closed don't. the door Whoa. on the three of Austin Dillon. You better Slammed watch him doing that. That knocked the hinges off it. Man, his car really takes off on the restarts. I think he's trying to make up for the time he lost. Carl is back. And Kyle says, I'm not going to fight you for it. Not yet anyway. Nope. Well, maybe. <laughs> Good battle for fifth. Kurt Busch, Casey Kane. I tell you, those pit, when you get a chance to pit like we just did, you can get a lot done to your car and make it a lot better, Matt. Trying to get a really good momentum building run here in Richmond for Casey Kane. Remember his best finish this year, a 10th back at Las Vegas. His car's been pretty good most of this event, just slight adjustments with a track bar adjustment from inside the race car to help the drive off, but it started hurting rolling through the center. The last run, just a wedge adjustment, the car too loose into turn three. I tell you, Matt, ever since he scraped the wall here off turn four, I don't know what it did to the car, but that thing took off. Truex. Uh, took 10th there from Ricky Stenhouse, who we've noted has a long run car, not so much a short run one. 
I say I don't know what it is. A lot of times you'll scrape the wall like that, Mike, and it'll, Mike, it'll adjust the toe. Maybe it had a little too much, or maybe it didn't have enough. Or maybe it flattens the right side of the car out Whoa, and uh, makes no, a little no, bit no, better no, aerodynamics. No, no, that no, would no. never happen. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> All I know is if you're going to plan that, you better, you're a better driver than I ever <laughs> You're was. really good, aren't you? <laughs> Hundred and seventy two complete back under green. What do you say we take a nationwide inside ride with Dale Jr. Boy, Ryan Blaney's been hard at work here. One lap down, 25th. He's making some amazing moves. I saw him come off a of four just a couple laps ago. He was on the top side, three wide, cut across, passed another car as they went down into turn one. You know, Mike, we, there's a few things a driver can do, but he can't do half of what they can do in the pits with a little wedge, a little air pressure, take a car that's junk. Get her tightened up a little bit, and you can go somewhere. And you know, under caution, you can maybe take a split second longer to make some of those adjustments. But when you're coming in under green, it's really difficult to ask that out of the pit crew because one mistake under green costs you a lap, possibly. It costs you a lot more track position when the cars are at speed. Landon Castle working on Joey Logano, and so is Ryan Blaney. They're in a big three-pack, making a four-pack with Casey Mears in turn four. Tough day for Joey, Vince. Wow, that is, that's an understatement, Mike. Started second, and uh, he's a lap down and been a lap down. Dropped like a rock so far today. He said he can hang on for about 15 or 20 laps, and then the car is just gone. They took a big swing at it at this pit stop, but uh, he's he's got a deep hole to dig out of. Logano has a four race streak of top 10 finishes, longest in the league. Fifth place, Casey Kane around the outside of Kurt Busch. Matt Kenseth looking in from seventh. Remember, Denny Hamlin has had to overcome uh, that pit road penalty. He is 17th, Matt. Mike, his day may have taken a turn for the worse. Denny reported two laps ago that he was low on volt. Mike Wheeler told him to start shutting off all the different fans and blowers. That did not help. He switched to the backup battery. Still not much better. The crew guys are getting their helmets on, waiting to see if Denny has to hit pit road, but problems on the 11. Well, he had to restart. Remember, when you serve that penalty, you restart at the tail end of the longest line when that happens under caution. So even though Hamlin restarted in 17th place, he was 38th in line when they dropped the green flag for the second time today. Yeah, and he's right at a half a lap, a little more than a half a lap behind the leader right now. You know, Mike, when I would go to Nashville or Martinsville or Bristol, anywhere where I knew I could win and I had a car that wasn't capable of winning, that was some of the most miserable days that you could have at the racetrack. Denny Hammond's at his home track. He wants to win here probably worse than anywhere we go. And then you have a car or a day like this, it really is miserable. Ninth place, Martin Truex trying to take it away from Brad Keselowski with uh, Ricky Stenhouse right behind them and moving into the picture. Yeah, here's that time in the run where Stenhouse's car really comes to life. You know, he's got to survive the restarts if we have many restarts because his car's not that good on the short runs. But boy, right here, he starts clicking them off. Jamie? Well, if you talk to his crew chief this morning, he said, you know, we felt good after Bristol last week. We showed that we are improving as a group. Roush Fenway, because they struggled mightily a couple of weeks ago at Martinsville. So coming into this race, they thought, okay, we might be a top 15 car. They have certainly been running better than that. Ricky now saying he's a little loose in and loose off, but overall the speed is pretty good. 
Bain fifth at Bristol last week. Roush as a team has had top tens in consecutive races only once in the last, well, year and a quarter. Maybe again today. What I liked about what I heard there, he didn't say I'm loose in, tight in the middle, loose off. He's only loose in, loose off. That's why his car's pretty good. And he likes it that way. Carl Edwards, one second ahead of his Toyota teammate, Kyle Busch. Earlier, Richard Petty and Eric Almirola stopped by the Smithfield display and the replica of the King 67 Plymouth Belvedere that won 27 races that year, including 10 in a row. Now, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of that, Smithfield has a supermarket sweeps with the Albertson Safeway grocery chain. Fans can win a trip to the Daytona 500, and someone will win that car. And what race weekend would be complete without the Smithfield Whole Hog Challenge Bacon Eating Challenge? How did we miss that this morning? Yeah, how oh, did we miss gosh. that? Gosh, I don't Man. know, but I, I don't want that. I like to have that car. That, that's a cool car. It's very cool, and it was built at the Petty Shops. Yeah, by some of the. It was lettered by the same fellow that lettered the car in '67. Yep, it's a sharp piece. Hand painted and, and hand lettered, and, and that thing's got a Hemi in it. And you know what? You could buy one on the showroom floor just like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, sort that's of, what Dale Inman said. Like it. We yeah. started with a showroom car. <laughs> that's right. Richard Petty's 43 has won 38 races in the state of Virginia. Seven in a row here at this little racetrack. Second most is 17 by DW. Woohoo! This is out for debris. Caution is out. Reed Sorensen had cut down a tire about eight laps ago, made his way to pit road, but they're going to now go and pick up the debris that that tire left along the way. So officially, the caution's out for debris. Now, on the last restart, well, first restart of the season for Tony Stewart, and here was his reaction. What the 24 did on that restart was sexy. That was pretty cool. I was uh, busy looking at the one up in front of you. It was pretty 
feeling pretty good. Here's what Tony was talking about. You're riding with Chase Elliott. Still there, room behind Bull. Wow. Three wide. Still three wide. Still three. Still three. Still three four now. That was definitely wide worthy wide of admiration by Tony Stewart. That was a, an aggressive move. There's something you didn't see out of the 24 car last year. <laughs> would you, you, would you oh, have ever gosh. done that? <laughs> no. Now, that is not a piece of tire. That's a brake duct, so that's a caution. But I, think but I would have liked that. My team would have liked me to have done that. Yes. Uh, I mean, that was amazing. That was a very aggressive. That's what rookies bring. That's what young, talented drivers like that bring. They're, they're willing to put it in there and take that big risk, and he's strong on the restarts. Now, they were battling so hard because they were trying to get to a position to be the first car one lap down when this, the next caution, came out. There was quite a battle there between Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson. Larson yep. gets the free pass. Yep. 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 Yeah, you want, want to know motivation? Why do you want to be aggressive on those restarts and get up to that car that's one lap down that you're trying to pass? I think Alan may have been, lit a fire under him. <laughs> Jamie. Carl Edwards says he was just a little looser in and a loose, little looser off. They're putting that wedge adjustment back in that they made on the first stop. Air pressure adjustment and a four-tire stop for the 19. Matt? And Jimmy Johnson telling Chad Knauss, the more laps he puts on a set of tires, the better his car moves around to the center of the corner. He was moving around trying to find more grip. Loose in, loose off. Meanwhile, the 18 of Kyle Busch, his brake shake is not a worse this run. Also, the chattering of the tires, much better this run, Vince. The car of Kevin Harvick's pretty solid. He said, I could just use a little bit more drive off. Slight air pressure adjustment from crew chief Roddy Childers. Carl Edwards holds the lead. The Advanced Auto Parts race off pit road. One spot gain for Kevin Harvick and trouble for Matt Kenseth. A very, very long stop for the 20. We'll update that when we come back. Nine. 
Aerial coverage on this beautiful day provided by Goodyear. Superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track and on the road. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. That's the Toyota Camry SE Hybrid leading the field. Cars taking the wave around nine of them working their way around the pace car around to the tail end of the field. We mentioned Matt Kenseth had a long pit stop stayed on the lead lap. What were they doing Matt? Mike he's been keeping an eye on the voltmeter much of this event but it started flashing back on lap 169. He was losing both swapping back and forth between batteries. They were looking for the caution. They got it. They swapped out both batteries fresh batteries now in the 20 to see if he can make it to the finish. Larry, do you think they're having some kind of an alternator issue that's not charging the battery? Well, the good thing, it made it to halfway, so if they change both the batteries out, they should be able to make it to the end, maybe even cutting a few things off, mainly driver comfort. Oh, man, don't do that to me. Now his teammate Denny Hamlin reported what sounded like a battery issue earlier in the race. They thought about pitting him. They did not for that issue. Getting ready for the restart. And Ed, boy, Carl Edwards got a great restart that time. Yes, he did. Well, he, the last he's one. the leader. He can do that. Well, Look at Al Marola down, down on the bottom. Where's that 24? Four, four wide. Oh, baby. Good grief. Look at that. Look at that. Four wide at Richmond. Are you kidding me? That's not Richmond. That's I-95 right there. <laughs> Whoa, what are they going to be five wide? Oh, Look no, at Logano. Oh, no. it's, I don't know about this one, boys. Six cars under a blanket. Goes Chase Elliott and you, they, Tony Stewart again. They lit a fire under that 24. Still middle of three, even with you. Still out there. Still out there, 23. Clear. This is amazing. See what Tony says about this restart. <laughs> he was impressed with the last one. Hamlin just gave uh, Tre Trevor Bain a big shot. It cost Hamlin. Right here, uh, Denny got a run on, on the six and hit him in the back end. It, caught, it broke his momentum and all. They got swarmed when it did. Chase Elliott to his outside and Austin Dillon right behind. This is for 14th. Everybody yeah. ahead of them is single file. Yeah, these two are battling for position 14th, but then you got Chase Elliott and Tony Stewart battling to stay on uh, one lap down, be the first car one lap down in case this caution comes out again. And Elliott got a great drive off the corner to pass Hamlin and go after Bain. Right now, Elliott is the first car one lap down. Carl Edwards, one and a half seconds up on Kevin Harvick. How about a Fox NASCAR Sunday Richmond? Crank it up. To Xfinity and on.
Just out there. Just out there still. Still out there, still out there. He's there. Outside, bottom is clear. Still out there, 14, right on your door. By himself. The three on the bottom, clear. Clear high and low, all clear. <laughs> A big thanks to our uh, Fox <laughs> NASCAR Emmy Award-winning live sports audio department. Mike, that's a beautiful noise. Yes, it is. I love it. <laughs> that's not noise. That's music. Yes, we do. That's, that's, that's orchestra. And, and what great battles. You had Almondinger, Menard, and McMurray battling for 25th. You had Stuart and Logano fighting for 22nd and more. Our Fox NASCAR mid-race report on the way. The Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.
And time now for the Fox NASCAR Mid-Race Report live from Richmond, Virginia. It's the Toyota Owners 400. First half has been like the Toyota Drivers 200, as in dominating the laps. Carl Edwards nearly 225 laps in. He's led the most. Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin have also written up front. Tony Stewart in his first race of the season as high as 50. It said early on the radio, for what it's worth, I'm having fun. And we've already had the same number of lead changes, Jeff, in the first half of this race that we had for the entire race last year. What's caught your attention? Well, Carl Edwards has everyone's attention out there. In the last three races, he's led more laps than he led in all of 14 and 15. I mean, this guy is rolling, not just here today, but he's on a heck of a roll. Jeff, Casey Kane has had a rough start to 2016. In fact, it's been 13 races since he had a top five at Kansas last October. A top five may not be a win, but I bet it'd be a win for him, and we're down to maybe one to two more stops. Kyle Busch has had two wins and a wreck in his last three starts. He is going to get this race done today. Adam Stevens, that crew will make the right adjustments. The pit stop on pit road could be the crucial move that puts Kyle Busch out front at the end. My man's running second right now, but NFL, not for long. DW, keep an eye on the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, chasing his season's third win. He hasn't won in a short track in three years. He felt like the last run. He overabused the tires early on. That's why he lost his balance. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is a three-time Richmond winner. He has three second-place finishes this year. He has three career weekend sweeps. He's either going to sweep or he's going to finish third. Uh, and the lead is heating up. Uh, let's check real quick. It's Harvick and Edwards going back and forth. Number Harvick, your pole sitter. And just to touch on Jimmy Johnson, he had not led a lap in the last three races until today as Harvick does take the lead. 44 laps led for Jimmy Johnson. So who's going to cool off the Toyotas of Joe Gibbs? They've won four of eight races, including the last three. Maybe it's Kevin Harvick. Maybe it's Jimmy Johnson. You'll have to stay tuned. NASCAR on Fox live from Richmond. Fox NASCAR is sponsored by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. And by Ford, we go further so you can.
237 of 400 laps complete in Richmond. Here's today's Ford Performance Track Facts. Hall of Famers who have won cup races at Richmond in a Ford. And look at that list. Eight drivers have won here. Driving for the Blue Oval on this track that began in the early 1950s and continues as one of the most exciting in all of NASCAR. Highest running Ford at the moment is Eric Almarola in ninth and Ricky Stenhouse 12th. Jamie? Eric Almarola having a nice run here. You know, they haven't had a whole lot to celebrate this year. Best finish 12th at Daytona, and I talked to crew chief Trent Owens this morning. He said with this package, they just struggled to get a hold on it. Their driver just has not been comfortable, but this weekend is the best they felt. And Eric Almarola behind the wheel saying, this is the best my car has felt all race. Well, and Ryan Newman just went around Amarola for eighth spot. Newman knows his way around here. He's a former winner here at Richmond. Coming off a season best ninth last week at Bristol. Got a little momentum going. They were pretty good in practice, and he's showing it here in race conditions. Eighth place, eight seconds off the lead for Ryan Newman. Kevin Harvick, who started this race from the pole because he had the fastest lap in pre-qualifying practice qualifying was rained out he has seven wins with Stuart Haas but no checkered flag on a short track since joining this team two second place finishes however well this is just a little bit smaller than Phoenix and we know what he does at Phoenix he dominates there so maybe they've got that Phoenix set up in the car today yeah DW but you know they were out front and then they lost that lead and I didn't think he was going to be able to get it back of course you know that number one pit stall is a big advantage here but he did it on the racetrack I'm just wondering we heard Jamie talk about that adjustment that Carl Edwards made and going back and forth on it uh, you know I'm just wondering if this adjustment's not quite working for him Vince yeah, they have made that car better for Kevin Harvick. There's no question about it. He wasn't very good that first run, and Rodney Childers has tweaked on it each of the last two stops. Childers told me today, he said, this is one of the hardest tracks for him as a crew chief. He said, it never seems like there's just one thing wrong. There's always four things wrong that you got to try to make better on the car, but that hasn't been the case here. They've just been fighting a little bit loose in. Well, Carl Edwards has led the most laps in this race, but he is seeing the lead get away. Harvick first, and now Kyle Busch has passed his teammate for second place. We listened in on Carl and company. Neutral lead, neutral center, but just lack rear drive. Yeah, but I'm getting beat in the center. I'm getting beat in the center with grip or something. I'm a little snug in the center. I got the track bar down, though, 6.5. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a, I watch the clock. That's what you do when you're in the pits. That's what you do as a crew chief or a spotter. And right now, Kevin Harvick's got everybody covered significantly. 23-8 last time by for Harvick. 24-2 on both of those, uh, 18 and the 19 and the 48. So he's got a couple in the bank and pulling away. The three fastest cars on the track are all Chevrolets. Harvick, Johnson, and Kurt Busch. Kane and Junior. Right along with Jamie McMurray. I love this camera shot. This is our 360 cam. We can pan around here, look inside, watch Jamie, see how he's working the steering wheel, listen to him working the throttle, look at our digital dash. And even look out the side window if we want. You know what I like? This aero package and these tires and the way these cars are right now, we saw last week, everybody complained about the cars running right up next to the wall. But you can run these cars anywhere you want to. But I think with this aero package, the car is just happier up high running up next to that outside wall. Boy, they're about three wide in front of McMurray. You heard him burp the throttle there. He's underneath uh, Regan Smith. And just ahead of them, Greg Biffle battling David Reagan. You know, I was happy to hear Rodney Childers talk about how tough this racetrack is as a crew chief because I feel the exact same way as a driver. There's three, four different things going on at both ends of the racetrack that you're trying to fix, that you're trying to fix as a driver, trying to fix as a crew, it is one of the toughest to set up for and drive to really get a hold of. Yeah, and Jeff, I think running at night covers up a lot of things. I mean, the grip on the track improves. I don't remember seeing these guys run up next to the wall at nighttime. This no. is a heck of a battle here, and this is for 15th, and they've been trading a little paint. Biffle, Dillon, and yeah, Reagan. You can see the smoke on the left rear of Reagan on the 23. That could be a problem. Um, 
Yeah, left no. front. front. Down there. You could see the left front fender was knocked in and the Clear. left rear. Caution, caution. And yellow is out again for debris. This time in turn number two. What a break that is for David Reagan, who is one of the 19 drivers on the lead lap. You can see the right side of that 23 is caved in front and rear. Let's see what happens here. Austin Dillon up on the outside there, and here comes Biffle. Bam! Now I think you know the 23 of Reagan was going to get underneath the car in front of him but I think Biffle just assumed he would go all the way out to the wall yeah there's the three of Austin Dillon the 23 had a run was going to go inside of him and when Biffle came up he thought he had room to go all the way out to the 23 who was going to be up next to the wall but the 23 turned down and they both collided just a racing incident if you ask me now this is all battling for position and battling to stay on the lead lap so a lot at stake between these three cars. Lucky break for, I don't know about lucky, but this guy's going to luck out pretty well here. He's been fighting. We've seen on restarts. He's been really aggressive. Chase Elliott, I think, gets the free pass. He does. I can't wait to watch him on the restart now that it's going to be for <laughs> position. He'll be and, more careful now. <laughs> and for the second time, who does that leave as the next car one lap down? Tony Stewart. So. Casey Kane currently sixth, Chase Elliott 20th. Have you made your decision yet? And have you voted because Dale Earnhardt Jr. right now is undeclared. And you'll decide who he votes for. And the pit crews will get a chance to shine again at lap 253. They've been out there for 56 laps on these tires. Here's Jamie. And Carl Edwards pit crew has certainly shined today. They're ready to do it again. They've been going back and forth on that wedge adjustment all race long. They're going to do it again. They'll add wedge, a four tire stop, air pressure, and a little bit of tape on the grill. Matt. Jimmy Johnson rolling the center good at the beginning of the run. Then he started to go free. He adjusted with the track bar and the brake bias. It seemed to help, but they're trying to tighten him up more. And meanwhile, the 18 of Kyle Busch, again, still trying to enter, improve his entry in turn one. A little drive off for Kevin Harvick. The number one pit stall helps him out just fine. He's the first one off. Another lengthy stop for Matt Kenseth. He's going to yeah. come out toward the tail end of that lead lap. But that, that number one pit stall, that's a gold mine. Yes, it is. Gold down there. 147 laps to go in the Commonwealth of Virginia.
How they... 144 laps to go. We're coming to green this time. Kevin Harvick started on the pole. He's your leader. Kyle Busch in second. Kurt Busch, Carl Edwards, Casey Kane, Dale Jr., Denny Hamlin, Jimmy Johnson. Toyota Camry Hybrid SE leads the field around. It'll make the dive onto pit road. And here we go. Watch that 18 car. Kyle Busch is amazing on restarts. So is the 41 of Kurt Busch. He thought about it. Probably thought second about it being his teammate. Three wide mid pack. Things not quite sorted out at the front. Harvick alone, then Kurt and Kyle, the Bush brothers, battle for second. Just remember last year, that 41 car dominated this race, and it was a day race. And I know they've worked on that car. He practiced a lot. Not surprising to see them get the car better later in the race. Oh, <laughs> Denny said hello. How rude. <laughs> You know, I just wonder also on the 41 of Kurt Busch, did they learn from something the four car did on that previous stop on an adjustment that they decided to implement into the 41 car, maybe make his car a little bit better as well? I wonder that too, but you know, the other thing I wonder, Jeff, is what's happened to the 19? As dominant as he was, I'm not sure what's going on with the 19, Vince. Well, and uh, in regards to the 41 guys, Jeff, as you were talking about, they went back to the setup that they had last year when they dominated this race. They tried those in practice. That's what they settled on. And in relation to the changes that the four has made, they've been very similar throughout the course of this race. Air pressure adjustments for both the four and the 41, as you see Harvick holding on to the lead. I wasn't sure if he was going to hold on to no. it. You saw him get real loose driving into turn one. He drove into turn one deep. And the car, the back of the car wiggled, allowing Kyle Busch to get inside of him again. I think Kyle likes that inside. That outside seems to prevail here off of turn four. Kyle gets loose off of four. But watch down here in one and two. I, want, I tell you what I want you to watch. Watch that four car right in the middle of the corner, how he kind of shoots out just a little bit. Boy, right Kyle's there. car rolls so good through the center there. It seems to me like the four car needs a few laps for the air pressures to come up before the balance of his car and the speed. And trouble for Ricky Stenhouse. He lost about five spots the last lap. Now he's lost five more and is headed and for Pit Road. He's coming to Pit Road. Tough break for Stenhouse. Eighth place, Hamlin and Keslowski. Stenhouse gets four tires. He will lose, I believe, two laps and stalls it. Oh, and they have a problem on pit road, too. Well, they let him go. Mm. It's one of the hardest things to do is put a whole, you got to put a whole race together. You got to run good on the track. You got to be smart in the pits. Driver's got to make good decisions. You got to put it all together. He goes two laps down. Jamie? Well, Ricky Stenhouse told his team he had a bad vibration, so they are checking all the wheels right now to see if indeed it was a loose wheel for the 17. Tough luck, he was running top 10, having a good run today. Well, we haven't talked a lot about lug nuts uh, today oh. like we've been talking in so many other races and all, a lot of loose wheels so far this year. So that seems to be our first one of the day. Matt Kenseth trying to work his way back to the front here in 12th place. Five and a half seconds off the lead. Now Stenhouse has brand new tires, but is two laps down. While we were gone, Martin Truex uh, came back in and made an extra stop. Jamie? Well, Jeff, as you said, we haven't talked a lot about lug nuts. Well, it bit the 78 once again, a right rear loose wheel, and we have oh, trouble on the no. track. It's Tony Stewart. Guys. Yeah, the left rear is down. Scotch is down for a flat. Just trying to limp it in here. You they were saying that he had a tire rub and that tire went away. Yeah, you can see back here on the left of uh, the left rear quarter panel where that's been pushed in right there. That knot is kind of what got that tire. Yeah, we've seen cars really 
bumping and banging a lot on restarts, jockeying for position, and unfortunately that contact that was made with the 14 is going to cost him. Stewart was 21st, one lap down. He did a great job staying out of the wall here when the tire does go down. Here's the restart. Joey Logano behind the Tony here. And oh, man. I, yay. Boy, don't let, don't give Logano an inch. He took, took advantage of that. You know, I think Tony was maybe blocking the outside to prevent what happened between Chase Elliott earlier when he took him three wide on the outside. And boy, Logano just went straight up the middle, made contact, and that's all it takes. That yep. slight amount of contact, that fender bent in like that, cuts the tire in a hurry. Joey uh, shot the gap. And guess who benefits? Joey. Logano gets the free pass. Oh, my goodness. Shot well, the gap. That's what they were fighting for, free well, pass position. Well, we, we, we know to get it. things like this can fire Tony Stewart up in a hurry. Oh, yeah. I do think it was a racing incident, though. I had to, it looked that way. Now, I don't know how Tony feels about that, but it looked that way. Guys, we've only run 10 laps, but I still think they'll come. The pace had slowed down because what you're doing is now you're looking out there at the end of the race, lap 400. You still have to make another stop, but I think you can kind of split these two runs up a little bit here. So I think you'll see them come. Jamie? It's follow the leader for the 19. He was going to do whatever they did, and he's saying he just needs some rear grip. The car definitely not the way it was the first half of the race. A four-tire stop here for Carl Edwards, Matt. Kyle Busch said the takeoff was excellent on the 18 car, but then he overabused the tires and the balance went away. Talking in code about what adjustments he wants. They're making a chassis adjustment, Vince. Kurt Busch pits from third, says it's pretty good. Four tires, no changes. Kevin Harvick says once the pressures come up, it's real good. They're not going to make any changes on the four either, just four tires. And what of Brad Keselowski? He chose not to pit. So he is the race leader. You know who's not happy about that? Probably that 17 car. Because he can't take the wave can't around because wave all around. the lead lap cars did not pit. There will be no wave around. 130 laps to go in Richmond.
the Toyota Owners 400 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. Ready for the restart with 127 to go. Joey Logano back on the lead lap. Caution for Tony Stewart, who continues one lap down. Getting ready. Green flag. Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick fighting for the lead. Kurt Busch and Carl Edwards in hot pursuit. That was a nice start right there. Everybody was on the same. I mean, they all came across the line together. That looked nice. Yeah, that inside lane's been getting such an advantage on restarts. But with the two car and the older tires, it seemed like they're very even there. And here comes the 41 on a little bit fresher tires. A little Ooh. contact there between Kurt Busch and Brad Keselowski. Now, to me, I mean, Brad had nothing to lose. He has a win in, in, you know, in the bag already. So why not risk it? Their car hasn't been quite strong enough to, to lead this race or get up front. Didn't have a lot of laps on the tires. They've been this using pay off for him. They've been using pit straight. Remember, he, he's been short pitting. That got him back in the race, sort of. And uh, now this call is another gamble, but it may pay off. Every driver in this top 10 has at least one win at Richmond. And I tell you, that four car gets a run up off turn two over there. A little bit better than anybody. Carl Edwards got a run to his rear bumper. I've just been curious about that 41 car all day long. He hadn't been, hadn't shown a lot of strength, but as good as he was here last year, it just made me wonder if they were ever going to get him dialed in, and I think they have. And we saw kind of a trend similar to this as Kyle Busch goes to the outside of the two of Brad Keselowski takes over second. That 18 car has some really good pace at the beginning of a run. We saw him go out and take the lead away from Carl Edwards earlier like this. Curious to see if they've adjusted on that car where it stays on the long run. That's the first lap that Kurt Busch has led today. And these brothers running one, two, they battle each other hard. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? There's no brotherly love there? I think maybe. I'm guessing that the competition between them is what's gotten them to this level. <laughs> I think you're right. Last year here, Kurt led 291 laps of this race. And Jeff, I know you say that, and they are brothers, but there was always somebody that made you go a little harder, try a little harder, drive a little harder. You know, maybe it was Earnhardt or, you know, maybe it was Rusty or whom, I don't know, whomever it might be, but they always made you be a little better than you thought you could be. Well, can you imagine being Kurt Busch and your little brothers pushing you to the limit and, and one of the best drivers that we've ever seen and two of the best drivers we've ever seen in the Cup Series to be able to have those two to battle it out with? That's definitely going to make you a much better race car driver. Yep. Kurt Busch out front. Paul Menard doing a nice job of being the first car one lap down in case these cautions breed cautions. Jamie McMurray right behind him. Back to the leader in Vince. Mike, it's interesting. You know, you mentioned that Kurt Busch dominated this race a year ago, and they told me before the race today that uh, they thought they had like a fifth to tenth place car that day a year ago, and the race started and the car just came alive. So it's no question or surprise that they went back toward that setup here for this weekend. They have worked on the car each stop except for the last one. No changes for Kurt that last time. Seen a lot of great battles out there on the racetrack. Racing's been fantastic today, if you ask me. I, a lot of passing. I, I've never seen this many passes happen at Richmond. Eric Almarola's having a pretty good day, too, Mike. Uh, he's been in the top 10 here the last little bit. Fifth place fight on the left, 11th at stake on the right of your screen. Yeah, I think those tires are definitely starting to take its toll on the two car. You know, he really wanted to go about 10 or 15 laps because he already had, what, 17, 18 laps on his tires compared to the competition and, and now he needs a caution badly and it will pay off for him if he can. Here we go. Got for the battle. lead. One high, one low. Which way are you going to go? And you can see Kurt basically moved down and said, hey, you want the outside? Go for it. I like the bottom right now. And Kyle says, OK, yeah. I think I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> you just go wherever you want to. This is where I'm going. We've I'm really seen the, the outside pay off here, especially off a of turn four. You can get a lot of momentum on the outside. Carry that speed down into turn one. Is 
18 gets a nice run off of two, but so does the 41. Their cars are fairly equal with the one on the inside and one on the outside. But you know, there's no give up in these two boys. Oh, no. Like oh, no, we said, they're going to make you go hard. And like you said, there's a lot of motivation. <laughs> yep. Kyle Busch back to the front. He's led 13 laps so far. And the free pass position has changed. Jamie McMurray has moved up to 21st ahead of Blaney, Menard, and Allmendinger. Uh, uh, what I'm finding so fascinating about this race, at the beginning of the race, I thought, wow, Kevin Harvick is so strong. Oh, Jimmy Johnson's going to dominate this race today. Well, oh, Carl Edwards has this one won. It continues to change constantly as who's dominating this race at different stages. Let's step back to seventh and get a nationwide Dale Jr. performance update. Matt. A lot more still left on Greg Ives' to-do list. If the 88 is going to go to victory lane here again today. The car just too free on exit for Junior. Been utilizing the bottom much of this race, and that's where he's been running here, trying to put another move on the 48. Looking for sixth place. And running about four and a half seconds off the lead. There's you. There's your buddy there. Dale Jr. and uh, Jimmy Johnson have a pretty nice battle right here, guys. Well, those two Chevys look very even right now. They do. One's on the bottom, one's on the top. And I noticed earlier when we were on board with Dale Jr., his car really rolls through the center of the corner, but we heard him uh, mention that he's loose off. So his car rolls really nice. It has good short run speed, but it seems like as loose as his car is, it goes away a little bit more on the longer runs. Not exactly sure what's happened to Jimmy Johnson. He was so dominant earlier in this race. Then he faded on that long run. It's never shown that kind of pace and speed since. I think, it, Jeff, I think what he did is he tried to run a little lower and it, it didn't work. Now he's back up in that high groove where he was when he led the race earlier. But the Dale Jr. drove by him. He's going on and Matt Kent's right behind him. From ninth on back, Hamlin. Then Newman and Keselowski has dropped nine spots. Remember, he did not pit at lap 270 along with the rest of the leaders. Now he falls to Al Marola yeah. and his 12th. And look who's coming now as well. Chase Elliott, what a great rebound. I mean, he was a lap down, struggling earlier in the race. And now look at him. He's going into 12th position here. Got Once the free he gets pass. by Keselowski. About 40 laps ago, he got the free pass. Yeah, you got uh, one, two, three. Uh, Four, all four Gibbs cars in the top 10, and then you got uh, three Hendrick cars in the top 10 right now. I don't think it's going to be long before we add a fourth and to four, that. And he's going to be the 24 will be there shortly. Chase Elliott ran 158 laps, one lap down to get into that position to fight his way back. Jamie? And the 24 of Chase Elliott, he's felt like he had a good car. They started off a little off. That's when they went a lap down, but Chase kept saying, if I could just get on the lead lap, I feel like we have a top 10 car. He's been aggressive today. They've made great changes on the car, and he is the best he's been. And so is Greg Biffle right behind <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> don't look now. Here comes the Biff. Battle and Greg Biffle. Kyle Busch ahead of his brother now by half a second with Carl Edwards third. Kevin Harvick, Casey Kane, the top five.
97 laps to go at Richmond. Here is the Coca-Cola family racing update. Nice to see Tony Stewart's face on that chart. Great to have him back starting his first race of the season after an off-season sand rail accident out in the dunes. Doctors on Wednesday pronounced him fit for duty. And Stewart currently 22nd, one lap down. And Austin Dillon was a lead lap car until just now. Jamie. Got a brand new race car this weekend for the first time. He said that he had a vibration there. Slugger Labby crew chief asked his guys. They said they got him all tight, so not sure what that vibration is. They'll check those tires coming off and put more fresh ones on. Now, he was 14th when he made that pit stop. He's gone one lap down. How about Dale Earnhardt Jr.? Got vibration. It's been asleep the whole run. Temper on the vibration to all the lug nuts look good. Yeah, so they say all the lug nuts look good. They go back and watch video from the tire changers to make sure that it looks like they hit them all. They talk to the tire changers. It's really important to have all that communication uh, you know, to make sure they make the proper decisions whether they need to come back down. What a battle here. Trevor Bain, <laughs> Brad Keselowski, and the 23 of David Reagan all fighting for 16th place. Tony Stewart a lap down right in there digging with them. Yeah, he's talking about those tire changers, Jeff. A lot of teams, I don't know if every one of them has or not, but they have a gauge or they have an, a, a way of measuring a sensor to tell you if you got the spikes, if you got all the lug nuts tight. So they have some information when they go to look yeah, at it. It's a pressure sensor on the line, the air line. So as they hit it, it knows whether it got the, the lug nut tight. But I heard it's not working real accurately for them. One other thing that's not working well, Jimmy Johnson's race car. He's in seventh, Matt, 5.7 seconds off the lead. Mike, he continues to widen out his line. He could not run in the bottom because the car was just way too free. Free up top, but not as bad. The track far down so I can have to drive off, but I'm starting to get tight everywhere else. But I need it down for the drive off. Step on, bud. Step on, man. We're trying, man. I promise you, we're, we're not intentionally trying. Oh, I know that, brother. No worries there. But you know what? They they I, they ran this high line in practice. I never saw him run the bottom at all. But I thought that was a good idea because I thought, well, they know the car will work down low, but they're not sure about power. But he's been kind of hung up here on the top and can't use the bottom today. A couple of Hendrick Chevys battle for fifth. Casey Kane, Dale Earnhardt Jr. And you can sort of tell there from Chad Knauss's voice. I mean, they came into this race with a lot of confidence, feeling really good. Jimmy loved the way the car was driving. They start the race good. But then as you get to this point in the race, you see it starting to slip away from you. You've been trying all kinds of things. You're just not quite getting it. Yeah, but they're not terrible right now, Jeff. I mean, to run in seventh, you know, maybe they get a caution here and do a little something to the car. They're not out of it by any means, but the car is not as good as they thought it was going to be and not as good as I thought it was going to be. They looked great when the race started. Larry, just under 90 laps to go. They were last on pit road at lap 270. If we stay green, when do you want tires? Well, I think we're going to see something interesting. There's the caution, so oh, they'll get Larry. four tires right now. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> lap 312. Was that Jacques or Pierre Debris this time? Yeah, one of them. Yep. Jamie McMurray, as we pointed out, did a great job of staying in the free pass position. He'll be back on the lead lap. You know how I know restart. when a caution's going to come out? You propose a question to me about <laughs> tires. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, we're yellow right now, but we will go back to green. NASCAR's green program is something that takes place each and every weekend on the racetrack. In 2011, the sport made a significant change to unleaded fuel in its race cars, turning to the greener, higher performance option of Sunoco Green E15. NASCAR Green, a nation committed to making a difference. Got to get it right this time. Got to hit the stop and got to make the right adjustments. Yeah, this could be the last one. Jamie. Carl Edwards says the difference between him and the front runners is he just loses grip as they go on. They want to tighten him up just a bit. They've been using 
wedge adjustment, and it is again, once again for the 19 and a four tire stop, Matt. And Kyle Busch says the car is very close. No chassis adjustments. If he needs to make an adjustment, who they're doing in the cockpit with track bar or the brake adjuster, Vince? Kurt Busch pits from second place. He says it's a tick free, but good. They're not going to touch it, just four tires. Kevin Harvick's going to get a little air pressure with four tires, said he needs a little help on exit. Nice race off pit road. Kurt Busch beats brother Kyle. And uh, moving on up, Carl Edwards. That's close right there. Ten cars take the wave around as we get ready to go back to green. For more on strategy, here's a look at pit performance sponsored by Advance Auto Parts. Well, let's take a look at Carl Edwards' six pit stops today. This stop right here, I know he didn't gain anything, but that was below 11 and a half seconds. Like always, they're getting it done on pit road for Carl Edwards. Now, Danica Patrick takes the wave around with 44 laps on her tires. Austin Dillon was just in 10 laps ago. He also takes the wave around. We'll restart with 22 lead lap cars, 83 laps to go. The Bush brothers, Harvick, Edwards, Earnhardt, Kane, Johnson, Hamlin. Whew. I'll tell you, that 41 car shot out gone. of there. <laughs> he went long gone. Look at the three wide from 10th on back. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. Oh, that's tight. Ooh, that's really tight. Yikes. And that was Ryan Newman caught in the middle and going back. Does he have a problem? I think he's got a loose tire. Yeah, he's got a tire. Oh, he's yeah. got a tire. Oh, he goes. goes. Left for a tire. Boy, just that amount of contact over there through one and two. Hey, Cut that left rear tire down. Rear looks like flat left rear. How about those wave arounds, though, boys? That's going to help a couple yeah, of guys. That's right. going to help several people. Yes, Danica Patrick and Stand Austin out. Dillon get back on the lead lap. Good and call. we'll have to wait and see who the free pass car is. That is why you take the risk to do the wave around. See if there was any contact uh, with Ryan Newman with all that. I bet you. That would cause that tire to go down. Left rear. I mean, a lot of these teams do run that air pressure really, really low on the left rear, but if I had to guess, I think it's contact. Let's see. 
See where we see him back here, back here. See if we can see from the overhead. He's right down and, at the bottom of your that screen. Him? Is that yes. right in there? Yeah, yes. and, and he's three wide here. Oh, and I know yep. exactly what it was. Got it's him. the tailpipe on the right side of the 42. Bam. Got into that left rear, and that will just cut it immediately. Yeah, that's what happened. Around he goes. It's kind of a double-edged sword, really. You get hit by a car, and your tailpipes get, and the tire pressure is really, really low. There's, yeah, the you can see those tailpipes there you go. down yeah. at the bottom of the rocker panel. Tailpipes are right in there, and they, uh, they're flush with the side of the car. Matter of fact, they stick out just a skosh, and you can see that's right where all the damage was. It even cut, it caught the uh, side skirt, it yeah. looked like. Now, Newman Pitt had changed the tire and did not lose a lap. Yeah, he did a great job Oop. of getting it back together. Oh. I mean, it brought out the caution. He goes around and... Ricky Stenhouse. They rolled a tire out in the middle oh, of pit road. Come on, guys. Great day gone. Well, you get, a, you get a good break here and got to put the whole race together. But just goes to show you the, the amount of pressure Whoa. that's on these pit crews on pit road. I mean, you would think in that instance, hey, let's just have a solid one. But they, they got to yeah. push, try to get those spots on pit road. Now, Clint Boyer is racing Brian Scott for position and just gave him a punt coming off pit road. <laughs> Four drivers have led over 40 laps today. There they are, upper left of your screen. For a limited time, switch to Sprint. Save 50% on most Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile rates. Sprint, better for less. I think with Boyer, he just pin up aggression. I just want to hit yep. somebody. So I'm going to hit you. Paul Menard gets the free pass on this, the sixth caution flag of the day. Here's your Bush race summary with 78 laps to go. Kurt Bush, no relation, is your race leader. 22 lead lap cars, including uh, Dylan and Patrick, who had taken the wave around in the prior caution. Eight leaders, 19 lead changes, six cautions for 34 laps. Let's get a recap on the day's action from Chris Myers. And Mike, the return of Tony Stewart, his first race of this season, said everything was perfect. The weather, racing during the day. Meanwhile, when they got to racing, Carl Edwards out of the box has led 149 laps, but tire problems for Denny Hamlin. Yeah, Will gets away on pit road. The team had to retrieve it, and watch, it bounces away again. Sent him to the rear of the field. Tony Stewart, after a little scrape, has a tire that goes down, has to go out of the race. He and Logano were battling for the free pass to get back on the lead lap. Logano made an aggressive move, gave Tony a flat left rear tire. Logano got back on the lead lap. And so now it's Kurt and Kyle Busch with 77 laps to go. Yeah, and Kyle Busch just gets better and better. I've seen that all year with this team. He and Adam Stevens are such good communicators. They improve their car every time they come to pit road. He's got it set up right now. And 19 lead changes in this race already, more than the entire race of last year. Let's head back up to Jeff, Darrell, and Mike. Oh, Chris, it's been a very competitive, exciting race so far. In recognition of Earth Day, Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with the Surfrider Foundation in celebration of this month's Every Day is Earth Day initiative. Make simple changes in our daily life, make a big impact on our environment. Go to foxsportssupports.com, learn more about what you can do to be part of the solution. Getting ready for the restart. Let's listen in on fifth place Dale Earnhardt Jr. Still pretty loose in, and I'd like to try to get my brakes where I got more rear brake to help the middle, but I can't because of the three in. Maybe that fuel out, or I don't know what you think about that. Don't do it if you don't, you know, don't believe in it, but you don't put any more fuel in it. It might help that injury, and I'll be able to run more rear brake. So the trail braking will help turn the car. I like that. That's 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 him thinking and talking to Greg Eyes about what he's thinking, and I, I like that. No matter what. They shouldn't have to put fuel in them anymore. Probably tires if we get a caution, but no fuel. Austin Dillon's team over the wall too soon. Ricky Stenhouse, tire violation. Three wide and spinning goes the 93. Ellis spins down the front straightaway. And we're right back to caution.
And I believe that will benefit Newman, maybe. Ryan Blaney. Perhaps. Blaney, I mean. Or Newman. We'll check here. One or the other. <laughs> Some guy named Ryan, that's all I know. Ryan Ellis making his second Sprint Cup start. Uh, looks like he had a little help from behind. Yeah, get about a little help from his friends. That's Landon Castle. Looked like Annette uh, sort of had a bobble. I don't know if he missed a, a shift or something in front or spun the tires right in front of him. He checks up. Ellis did, and then 38 gets the back of him and spins him out. Pit road is closed while NASCAR strives to get the restart order correct. Now Newman can't be the free pass because he was on the lead lap. He didn't lose a yeah, lap. He didn't Remember lose he made that lap. tire right. change. Did not lose a lap. So we're looking between Ryan Blaney and Tony Stewart perhaps to see who the free pass car will be. There you go. There'll be no wave arounds because the lead lap cars are not pitting. Yeah, well, I heard Ryan, and so I don't know which Ryan they were talking about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Having a look at Richmond International Raceway. This kind of concludes our short track swing and we're going all the way to the other extreme next Sunday. It's been a crazy season so far with six different winners punching their ticket into the chase. Next week we head to Alabama home of Talladega Super Speedway and the big one. You don't want to miss any of the action starting Sunday at 1030 a.m. Eastern on FS1 and continuing at 1230 Eastern on Fox. High speeds, high drama. Talladega. Then Kansas. And then Dover. So a lot of country hopping, time zone hopping back and forth. You know the first weeks. thing comes to my mind when I start thinking about Talladega? That amazing finish we had at Daytona. And I'm, yes. and I'm excited about next week to see if we can't create another one like that. Hey, I like this guy. He's, yep. got, he's got an awesome shirt on. Thank you. Got good taste, anybody. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, a bunch of Jeff Gordon fans there. Jeff, I never That's told you. the love. I appreciate it. I never told you this, but I have a Jeff Gordon oh, t-shirt. thank you, yeah. DW. Yeah, I, I got <laughs> We're having a lot of fun up here, aren't we? <laughs> we are. I, I really <laughs> mean it. I am. I love it up here. Been having a blast all year long. Uh, well, I don't know. A guy named Tony gets the well, now, free pass. What NASCAR has to do is they have to go back and review the scoring tape to see at the moment of caution loop data, the last scoring loop that was crossed and determine who's eligible for the free pass and it is going to be Tony Stewart. Matt? Stewart feeling good and he's voting that every race here at Richmond becomes a day race. Now we documented earlier his $35,000 fine and the fact that his peers from the driver council were going to chip in and pay it. Tony felt humbled but he also felt like he needed to pay that himself. So instead, he's going to take that 35000 from the driver council and donate it to the Drive for Autism, the services they provide uh, to the autism community up in Delaware. And remember, it is Autism Awareness Month. Nice gesture. That is that's fantastic. That. Artie Kempner will be happy to hear that. And, uh, <laughs> yes. I just, I, I tell you, I know Tony, he can be a curmudgeon and he can be, you know, cranky sometime. But you gotta love the guy. I gotta love his heart, his passion, and he just he just does stuff like that. You, you said it, DW. A lot of passion, a lot of heart in this guy, and a lot of talent. And I know I spoke to Tony yesterday. He was so blown away that the the drivers wanted to pitch in and do that. It was that the right thing for the driver council to do. That's up for debate. But the fact that they wanted to do it for him uh, it meant the world to him. And you know when you're coming back from all that he's been through and the injury. Getting back to the racetrack, um, you know, that only added to uh, his decision to come back here at Richmond this weekend. Yep. Now, let's go back to the decision on the free pass. 
It was between the 21 of Ryan Blaney and the 14 of Tony Stewart, and NASCAR judged that the 21 was lined up improperly oh, on wow. the last restart. And that's why the 14 is the free pass car. Very interesting. Yep. Yep. Well, a guy named Ryan must have been in the wrong spot. And, you know, I, I'll tell you, when when the lanes, lane choice is as critical as it is here on restarts, sometimes you'll try to take advantage of that and think, oh, NASCAR's not really watching me. I'm a lap down. No. They're paying more attention to the lead lap cars. And you might try to take advantage on that situation. But... Um, good for them for, for finding that, ser searching that out, and getting this right. You know, as I look at the rundown here, you got uh, two Stuart Haas cars in the top ten. You got all five of four of the Gibbs cars in the 78 is 11th, and then you got the Hendrick cars, all three of those with the 24 12th. That's, your, that's uh, the teams that are dominating the race right now. And now for something you'll really like. How about a little radio remix? Woohoo! Nice. Not doing anything different. Got a 155 point deficit. Need a win too. Got the guy in the seat to do it. Green flag, green, green flag, green, green. Bumpers ahead, but rolling. Levens up your ass. Be smart and focused right here. These guys are going to race you really, really hard. I made an interesting for him for about 15 laps. One to go. He was talking about Carl. He made, he made yes. it hard for Carl to get around him. I just He's having a blast out there. Man, uh, we're excited to have you back, Tony. And, and Thank he, you for bringing all that interesting uh, commentary and driving. It's going to be a lot of fun. And he's not tired. You can hear it in his voice. I mean, his voice is strong. He's not, you know, it's, it's, it's going well. So the Bush brothers will battle from the front row. On this restart, if I was that pace car, I'd get out of the way in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> We've been seeing where the inside lane seems to have a real advantage. Uh, maybe it's just the leader as well, uh, being able to control the restart. So curious to see what Kyle Busch can do here on the outside. Seems like if he can hold to the outside of the 41 on the restart, he might be able to get by him. But it's not a big advantage like it used to be. Remember when Montoya lost a race here because they miscounted cars coming out of the pit and he ended up in the wrong lane? I don't see that either lane has a big disadvantage today. And I wonder if it's the aero package as well as this Goodyear tire that we have here and being a day race. I don't know, but you better be ready because that 41 took off last time. 67 to go. They're in the restart zone and they're off. Pretty equal. Pretty good start that time. And look at the swarm behind them. Now going into turn one, it's, it's it's a big sucker hole. I mean, it's like a funnel. You got a lot of room getting down there, but it it tightens up when you get there. Yeah, it draws you in, doesn't it? it? You think you can get down there three wide? Sometime you make it. <laughs> Kurt wins that battle. Kyle second, Harvick third, Edwards fourth, Earnhardt fifth. Isn't that amazing? Dale Jr. just quietly today has worked his way right into the top five. And for the moment, the Bush brothers pulling away. There's Earnhardt and Johnson side by side for fifth. Yeah, Johnson has got that outside working right now. He went right around Dale Jr. on the outside. Nice pass. Yeah, it looked like Jr. got a little bit loose. We heard him talking about being loose. He got a little loose on the inside of Johnson right there. Got all three of those Henry cars. There's Casey Kane, Dale Jr., and Jimmy Johnson racing each other pretty hard right now. And Chase, here comes Chase. Closing up from the back. Boy, he's been so good on the outside on these restarts all he day has. long. Now he's got some good track position to make something out of it. Elliott to ninth. Well, that is the most orderly restart we've seen all day. <laughs> Don't know why. Not a lot of contact. Well, I think if people got tired of cutting tires down. Yeah, we just saw Denny lose a spot to Chase Elliott. Elliott was on the outside. Now here comes Truex Jr. on the inside. Truex and the, that crowd, Cole Pernan, they've done a nice job of getting Truex's car better as the day has gone on. And that's the first time I think we've seen him uh, in the top. What is he? Uh, 11th. 11th, yeah. Seventh place, Matt Kenseth going after Casey Kane. 
Kane has run more laps in the top five today than in the entire season coming into Richmond. Yeah, Casey's had a great solid car and day on pit road, on the racetrack all day long. Yeah, I think he and Keith Rodden are, you know, it took a little for them to get to get comfortable with each other, maybe get that communication down. They're starting to see some good results. On the right, Carl Edwards going after Kevin Harvick, third place. Keith Rotten, the crew chief on, yep. the, on that uh, Casey Kane car. I'm a little surprised there. Kevin didn't fight him harder for that. I don't know if Kevin just feels like, hey, we, you know, I know that we've got 59, 60 laps to go here and we need to make these tires last all the way to the end, or uh, maybe there's something else, Vince. You know, Jeff, they just don't have the drive off. The car has been pretty good throughout most of the day today, but in the last couple of runs, Kevin has really said it's missing the drive off, and that's where he's getting beat. Well, we heard Rodney Childers, uh, we didn't hear him, but he said, oh my gosh. Now, let me, oh, let let me catch Stewart up on, on the inside. Tony Stewart on the inside. The reason Woo. he's way back there, he's on the lead lap, but because he had that cut tire, he pitted before pit road was open, so he had to restart tail end of the longest line, and look where it's put him. He is coming up through there. He's aggressive, man. He's making some bold <laughs> moves. I know he's having fun right now. But those are all lapped cars that he's dicing with. And all 40 cars are still running that started this race. So tail end of the longest line is a long way back there. Jimmy Johnson, I think he and Chad Canassa made some adjustments. This car is looking much stronger on this run. It really is. You know, I'm not so sure the track hadn't maybe gone through a little bit of a transition here. I'm thinking that temps have called uh, fallen a little bit, and that's changed where you can run on the racetrack right now. Almarola, the 43, is the first Ford in the race. Ahead of Logano and Keslowski from 13th on back, five Fords in a row. 55 laps to go in Richmond. Don't move. Well, the Joe Gibbs Toyotas have dominated on the short tracks of NASCAR, winning half the races on short tracks since 2009. But perhaps not today. Kurt Busch 
in that Stuart Haas Chevrolet is the class of the field with 48 laps to go. Here's what his younger brother and defending Sprint Cup champ has to say about that. Uh, no way we're grip whatsoever. I'm sideways. Sideways everywhere. Come on, man. Do what you can. We'll get another chance to work on it here. 26. He holds second place. One second off the lead. Let's go back to the battle for sixth. Watching from Earnhardt's car at teammate. Casey Kane. And at second place, teammates. Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards moves back up into contention now in second. Jamie. And of course, teammates scan each other's radio. So just before we aired that radio, Kyle Busch, Dave Rogers let his driver, Carl Edwards, know what was happening. There's nothing like that. It's like smelling blood in the water for a shark. Hey, he's struggling. Go get him. And that's exactly what Carl did. Oh, yeah. Get an advantage any way you can. If you have information like that, you have to use it. And they use that for Carl Edwards' advantage. Seventh place and Matt Kenseth, who replaced a battery early on a pit stop but did not lose a lap doing it, is right back in it here. You know, I'm not so sure that the track conditions, I know it's still sunny out, but I'm not so sure they're changing this track slightly. The sun is starting to set. I think that track temp might be cooling down slightly, changing the balance for some of these cars. Yeah, well, I see more and more cars running on the bottom than we did earlier in the day, so that tells me there's more grip down there now, and that could be just basically from the track temp. Here goes the 20 car. Been watching Matt Kenseth. Been making a nice march toward the front. Got a pretty good race car right now. I don't know if he's got time to get to the lead or not, but he's got a good car. So Chevy's are first, fourth, and fifth. Toyota's second, third, and seventh. The first of the Fords is Keselowski in 12th. Here's the running order for Joe Gibbs Racing. 43 laps to go. A lot can happen. Well, when I look at the lap times right now, last time by Kurt Busch, the leader ran a 23.7. Edwards running second was a 23.57. So that's a little bit quicker on Edwards at this point. Now he seems to be at least a tenth quicker each lap than the leader. Well, watch that distance behind the leader. See if Carl can close that up. Whoa, spin, turn spin. four, Brian Scott. Just looped it around and it puts us under caution for the eighth time today at lap 359. I believe this changes everything. What do you think? Uh, except <laughs> it's the eighth, yeah, eighth caution for Brian Scott and A.J. Allmendinger will get the free pass. No question. Four tires, and maybe like Dale Earnhardt Jr. said, don't worry about fuel. Just get me out of here. You didn't even give me a chance to ask you this time. <laughs> well, the caution's already out now. Fair enough. We saw a little bit of damage on the 44, as if maybe he got into the wall with the right rear. Curious to see. We got that, but here they come. The Did Kurt Busch want to see this caution? Oh, no, no. I think he I was think very so. comfortable where he was. But I yep. think Carl Edwards and maybe, a, maybe the four car of Harvick did. Jamie? Well, Carl said he was a little bit better that run, but still a little loose in and off. They're just going to take four tires here and take just enough fuel to make it to the end, Matt. Entry and exit. Book took a big swing this past run. You heard Kyle Busch talking about it. Adam Stevens going to try to fix it with a chassis adjustment, Vince. Kevin Harvick says he's too loose. He's got to have some help if he's going to contend. Kurt Busch is just fine. There's not going to be any changes on the 41. Just four tires. They both need clean pit stops if they're going to contend for the win here today. And the 41 is off. Not a good stop. Kyle Busch. Wins the advanced auto parts race off pit road. Picks up two spots. A uh, tough spot for Austin Dillon. Uh, he slid through his pit box entering and had to back up. Lost a bunch of positions. 40 laps to go. Don't go away. We won't either. You're watching Fox NASCAR.
Who's going to win the Toyota Owners 400? Today at Richmond, we're 37 laps from finding out. That caution flag pit stop was definitely something Kurt Busch did not want to see. He came in first, came out fifth, and you see 1.4 seconds slower than the 10 and a half second stop for his younger brother Kyle. Wow, that is an impressive wow. stop. And that was my point when I said it's going to change everything because I felt like pit stops were going to make a huge difference right here. 12 drivers took the wave around, and that will put seven of them back on the lead lap. Blaney, Stenhouse, Mears, Castle, DiBenedetto, Smith, and McDowell. Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, teammates fighting for the win. Whoa, Kurt Busch dives the inside of the 48, getting in at turn one key. Oh, Yikes, that he was tight. That was so close. The battle's for fifth. Kurt Busch, and on the outside, Casey Kane. Whoa, oh, that, Bush, that, a big Bush, slide. I think he might. You don't think he has a problem, do you, man? I think looked bad loose up off the corner then. You know, I wonder, did they make an air pressure adjustment or do anything to try to free this car up for the short run? Something wrong. Here's what they said after the stop on the 41. Hey, Zippy. How many Gibbs cars passed us? It's all good, boys. All right. Yeah, 10 four. We just had a bad one right there, so. Sorry, Zip. It's not your bad, buddy. We're all in it together. Who knows how many luck not safe tight anyway. 10 four. We'll be fine, man. So Kurt Bush, now eighth, ninth, something, tenth. Something wrong. Something bad. Something's happening to that 41 car. Yeah, his car is not handling well. He's all over the place. There were three wide, 22 to the outside. Now three wide again off of four. Vince. I just confirmed with their crew, no changes, no air pressure changes or changes of any sort on that 41 last stop. Wow. Came in first, came out fifth. He's now 10th. Yeah, something's changed. Look at that. He can't keep it on the yellow line. They're just no, eating him up right through the middle of the corner. And, and, and Jeff, no, Mike, that's the car that was leading the race when the caution came out. And I mean, driving they're away. pulling away. Daryl, you called it. That changed everything oh, yeah. for him. I don't know what, I know they say they didn't do anything, but something happened. And it changed a lot for who's leading out there too. The 18 of Kyle Busch is pulling away. Here's a great battle for fifth place. Hamlin and Harvick. And that was, you think about Kyle Busch, he was complaining his car was loose, no grip, oh, no bike, oh, couldn't get off the corner. 22 almost turned the 20 right there as he went down into one. Now we did hear that Harvick made a slight air pressure adjustment because there were only 35 or six laps to go to try to get his car to have more front end speed. Yeah, he, he just is not real good for about 10 or 15 laps. Then he kind of takes off. But what about the 22? I mean, where'd he come from? Here he is running eighth place right now. We haven't talked much about him all day long, except how bad he was. Yeah, he was way behind at the beginning of this race on that first run. Remember how far back he fell? Oh, yeah. A lap down. Martin Truex right there battling with the 22 of Logano. Logano battling with the 20 of. Ooh, you see it wiggle. You saw the two car wiggle. But they're driving really aggressively right now. They know. Got to. Time yep. is running out. Got to go. Inside 30 laps to go, Kyle Busch one and a half seconds to the good on Carl Edwards. And right now running the best lap times, 22.76 to 22.8. Amazing how he does that when it comes down to the end. Particularly this year and recently, he really is good at the end of the day getting the most out of the car. But it took that fantastic pit stop to get him to the front as we watch the battle for eighth, Logano and Truex. Jamie? Remember earlier they had a loose right rear. One of the lug nuts got stuck in the brake caliper. He fought his way back into the top 10, but they have been having radio issues. The team cannot hear Martin at all. In fact, on that last stop, all they could hear was the motor running when he cued it. Wow. Truex was 10th when they had the problem with the lug nut. Yeah, we've seen a lot of great comebacks from several different teams. You talked about Logano, the 20 of Matt Kenseth, and right here, the 78 of Truex. You know, he, they, they've had their problems today as well, but now looking, you know, for a battle of, uh, in eighth place. 
And how about Denny Hamlin rebounding from that uncontrolled tire back at lap 158 that dropped him from third to 17th. Here's Hamlin up to sixth. Yeah, and, and of course we remember it right behind him, Matt Kenseth had that battery issue. They had to change the batteries. So these guys have done a great job of battling back and getting themselves in the top 10. Twenty four laps to go. Well, one trend has been every time I've spoke, there's going to cost <laughs> right. But my trend over the last 10 spring races here, average of the last caution, 25 to go six times in the last 15 laps and two times we went to overtime. I think you just get so aggressive at the end of these races that, uh, you know, something's bound to happen. Well, and especially as time is winding down, you can just tell the aggressiveness of these passes. Everybody's fighting for position, whether you're trying to protect the position or take the position. And with that last caution and 12 cars taking the wave around, there are 32 cars on the lead lap as we get in the closing stages here. Wow, a little nudge there, <laughs> yeah, nudge and run. Yeah. The two just gave David Jr. a little shot. A little wake-up call there. Chase Elliott with a front row spot for this battle. The two and the 88 are pretty equal. 88 gets up off the corner a little bit better. Two comes back getting in a little bit, and there's Chase watching as uh, these two battle it out. Well, we've seen the two, and now we're seeing the 22 as well, where they have good short run speed. This is a shorter run, so they might be able to, to hang on here and, and, and make some positions up. As you see, the two really roll through the center of the corner there. You saw it. Chase gave up the entry. The two rolled through the middle really good, but then Chase had a big run on the exit of the corner. Just two different styles and ways and setups and how they pay each pay off. Sixth place, teammates Hamlin and Kenseth. Tony Stewart trying Eric Almirola and Austin Dillon. That's a battle for position back at 20th. Behind them, Danica Patrick and David Reagan are trying to trade a little sheet metal now that A.J. Allmendinger has cleared them. Uh, smoke trying to move into the top 20. That's about where he's been all day, right there, about 18th yeah. to 21st, just about all day long. But I'm proud of him. Run the whole race, going to get a pretty good finish here. 18 laps to go with number 18 out front, but only by half a second. Carl Edwards is eating into Kyle's well, lead. Well, we saw this last week how lap traffic was crucial, how you work that lap traffic. And we've seen Carl Edwards, as Kyle Busch has gotten into lap traffic, do a little bit better job. Look at him closing in. Yeah, I think I don't think Kyle's car is great, but he got out front and he's been able to get a little bit of a gap between him and the 19, but the 19 is coming in a hurry. It's going to be close. One lap car, two lap cars separate them. Moving around McDowell and now headed for Clint Boyer as Edwards. Boyer goes way high, leaves Carl the bottom. Kyle got through that little bit of traffic jam there pretty good. Yep. But I tell you, that 19 is breathing down his collar right now. He's coming, guys. Kyle Busch has four victories at Richmond, and they have all come in the spring race and all at night. Excuse me. Yes, all at night. 19 just made a big, he just took a big chunk. Carl's moved to the top of the track. He just did that in one and two. He just did it in three and four. And he has taken a big chunk out of that lead in one lap. 14 to go. Going to be a while before they catch the lap, next lapped cars of Brian Scott and Casey Mears trying to hang on to the tail end of the lead lap. Mike, watch that 19 close. He gets up high. He gets that nice run off the corner, and he really does close up on 18 to Kyle Busch off turn four here. It's like Jamie Little said, there's blood in the water. He's coming. Yep. And he's got plenty of time to get there. Yeah, I know what will happen here is Kyle Busch, he'll start looking in his mirror. He knows that he's a little bit faster than him, but he might start taking his line away and searching around himself. 
when Carl moved up, he moved way up. I mean, right up next to the wall like we see now. And that really helped him. He really started to pick up speed. These guys are both driving really, really hard. The lap times are pretty solid for this part of a run. And you can see them really sliding the cars around. You see Carl Edwards wiggle there a little bit. They know every single moment on this racetrack and what they do when they get back to the throttle how they get through lap traffic is crucial well, now that was wild kyle went underneath the 13 at casey mirrors and carl took the long way around 11 laps to go this is where that outside really pays off he gets a big straight run off there and really closes going into three uh oh gonna try to get on ryan ellis yeah well, the 93 is gonna hold him up a little bit here. down a little bit but but this, this is going to be one of those things when he gets there. I'm just not real sure what he's going to do, how he's going to get by if he does catch Kyle. Now you can see him move low. He's been moving higher and Kyle's been moving up. They're pretty equal off the corner. Where the difference is, that 19 is getting in the corner a little bit better. He's like a dog whoa, chasing. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Got a little hot there. So he's like a dog chasing a mailman. If I catch him, what am I going to do with that's him? That's right. That's right. See Kyle's wife on the right there, Samantha Bush. She, she's just, just like she's in there driving the car right along with him. Carl's looking, looking. He's got the nose down oh. there. He's looking, guys. There's no doubt he's a little bit better. Yep. He, he has Kyle searching around, watching his mirror a little bit. But can he get by him? Eight four times eight. Tell you, there's nobody harder to to pass to and the, outrun than that 18 car but the two cars ahead of them are on the lead lap fighting for position castle and blaney are trading a little paint are they going to clog up both lanes here then a castle makes that pass and here comes Blaney back. Something, they're definitely yeah. going to be a factor. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're going to be in the way. He's going to give it away. Beautiful job by Blaney. He saw him coming and just dropped to the inside. What a great job by him. The veteran move. Yep. Gentleman. Smarky. Hopefully that gets repaid in kind. Because when they come to the stripe this time, it'll be just six laps to go. I mean, Carl is so close, so close. But that little gap, he can't quite close that last little bit. Maybe now, without traffic, he might be able to. There he is. Close up there. there. Is. But look, he got loose off the corner. When he goes low, he gets loose. Carl's best bet is to ride that ring. Oh, look at Carl. Five more times. Stepped out the back end. Hey, has he got his elbows up? <laughs> I guarantee he does. Stayed at the top of 32. This is like cat and mouse right here. Go high, go low, go low, go high. Carl lost Phoenix by one one hundredth of a second. Truex lost the 500 by one one hundredth of a second. Carl dog tracks it off <laughs> off a of turn four. Remember when we saw the battle between Jimmy Johnson, and Carl Edwards at the beginning of this race and we felt like, well, Jimmy's got he has control. He bobbled one time, got loose off a of turn two, good, and good Carl went right on by him. That's all it could possibly take for Kyle Busch to lose this race. Great corner that time off, too, yep. by the 18 car. He opened that gap back up on Carl. Carl is driving so hard, he's getting good, loose. There. 30 should stay bottom. Black one. Josh Wise ahead on the bottom, and then Ricky Stenhouse, who was the last car on the lead lap. There he comes on the bottom again. He tries to get up off that corner, but he, he just can't accelerate out of that hole over there to get to, to get to the back bumper. Yeah, Carl's his car really rolls through the center, but it doesn't seem to have as good a drive off. No, I think I, I think I think Kyle's got this. He's just good enough that he can't Carl can't get to him. Two more laps. I know Carl Edwards, he's, he's about to bite that steering wheel. Fast enough to beat the whale, give us the lane then. 55 then bottom. And here we go, boys. Yeah, that's where the spotters start running to the uh, other spotters saying, all right, we got one lap to go. White flag, one lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. <laughs> and here it is. Here's wow, the move. look at this. Oh. Content, did they make content? Oh, I, don't, I don't know, it's pretty close, but this is going to be a drag wow. race. Last gasp, Woo. turn three, last lap. Traffic ahead. Kyle Busch, the leader. Look at this. Carl Look at Edwards this. right Look at there. This. Moves wow. him to win it. Carl Edwards bump and dump and run. Oh, God. How did no. he pull that off? That's a teammate. 
Oh, my Yikes. goodness. 27 oh, victories. You're a fan, dude. You're a fan. I don't know what happened, but that was cool. Two in a row for Carl Edwards. Sixth time in his career, he goes back to back, and that is the first last lap pass in the history of Richmond International Raceway. Mike, they said they don't know what happened, but I know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how did he gain on Kyle in that final all in, lap like All in that? turn one. He just drove that thing into turn one like he did at and Kansas that day. And it stuck, and he was able to close that gap. I'm thinking of Benny Parsons, and what did he always say? Big Mo. Momentum. <laughs> Boy, Two yeah. in a row. This part here. So you know we get to see now. The backflip. Yeah, that's how yeah. Kyle feels. He's got, got, that, a, got that thing on the That's, the that's a back. shame. He got drove. Ice pack. He drove a great race. Oh, he amazing did. race. He did. He worked traffic per perfectly. He was looking in his mirror. He's doing everything he needed to do. Not sure he expected that either. Taking I, home the checkered flag today's Sunoco fueling victory for Carl Edwards. I know I didn't expect. I mean, I, I know I, I didn't. I, I, I'll bet Kyle didn't. No. All right, let's have a look at the last lap one more time. I thought perhaps lap traffic ahead would be a factor. Not so much. Here no, we watch go. it right here going into turn one. Watch Carl. He just drives, look drives, how drives, drives he all was. the way down in there. And he got the nose up beside. I thought they made contact there, nope. but they didn't. It just looked like Kyle was super conservative right there. Now Carl does it again, real aggressive. Look how Kyle's car just drifted up the racetrack, allowed Carl to get to him. Jamie Little is with Kyle Busch. And uh, we were just watching the replay, Kyle, and Jeff said you were a little conservative there, maybe at the end. What's your take on uh, the way that Carl just won? Uh, it's racing, I guess. You know, we had a really great car. Banfield uh, Pet Hospital Camry was really good today. We were fast. Um, you know, maybe not as good as Carl was on the long runs, but we did everything right. We did everything we were supposed to do and put ourselves in the right position. Adam made some awesome adjustments to this car. We lost it there the second to last run. and. We're fading a little bit, but uh, guys gave me an awesome pit stop, got me the track position, got us out front, and we had a shot to win. So that's all that matters. Kyle Bush led 78 laps today, brings it home second. So close. One corner away from victory for Kyle Bush. Oh, Carl Edwards wins. Live here in Richmond where Carl Edwards goes back to back and that deserves a backflip. He tried in Phoenix but couldn't catch Kevin Harvick there. His teammate Kyle Busch, he caught him here with a dramatic finish to put him in victory lane where Vince Welch is there for the celebration. An emotional win for Carl Edwards back to back in the first ever last lap pass to win at Richmond. Was there any question at all once you caught Kyle that you'd bump and run to win? Oh yeah, it was a huge question. Um, Kyle's an amazing teammate and um, it, he just, it's like he got really slow there at the end. Something happened that last lap. It's like his rear tires went off or something. He went down into one, I dove it in and I got to him. I thought, man, I got something here. And then he went to, to get down the bottom and park it in three and four and I'd already decided to go down there. So I thought, man, I'm gonna give him a little nudge. And um, you know, we both got wins and we're racing for fun, getting these trophies and just uh, just an awesome day. I cannot thank Xfinity enough. I, I hope folks are watching with the X1. It's uh, it's a revolutionary way to watch TV. And man, I didn't think we had anything. Kyle was so good there for a long that run. I was just I was doing everything I could. He never spun his tires. And if Dave hadn't screamed at me on the radio to just go get him, you know, that last lap, I don't know if I'd have dove it in there that hard. So real team effort. Just can't thank Aris and Toyota enough. It's a great day for Toyota. They've done so much for me. Just uh, everybody, Comcast, Xfinity. All these guys, J5 Tactical, Wiley X, and all the fans. It's an afternoon race, which made it a lot of fun to drive, and a bunch of families here. So uh, just uh, very cool. Subway, too. It's a um, big win for us. Well done. <laughs> Carl Edwards, the winner at Richmond. Jimmy Johnson, a strong top five finish today. When you look back on today, it seemed like everybody's comments on the radio, they were having fun, but yet it was difficult and a challenge trying to connect the corner. It was. I mean, I think this tire was perfect for uh, for what we've been asking for. We were able to have multiple lanes. It laid the rubber in the racetrack, and we didn't have all those marbles build up in the outside where uh, really limited your opportunities up high. 
Um, it was fun. Cars were slipping and sliding, ton of fall off. Um, I enjoyed the long runs. I really like sizing up guys that I'm racing with and seeing how that works out. And then at the end, we had a bunch of short runs, and, and thankfully we got our lowest pro service to Chevrolet tuned up at the end. We kind of lost our way in the middle part of the race, but good pit stops and uh, some great adjustments at the end got us in there in the top three. Third, just like he was here a year ago. Jamie? Casey Kane brings it home fourth today, his first top five of the season. Casey, it seemed like a pretty solid day all along. Is this a sign of things to come, perhaps? Yeah, it definitely is. The uh, Mountain Dew Chevrolet was great uh, the whole race. The pit stops were awesome. And just the communication with Keith and the team all weekend long, same as last week, same as the week before in Texas. It's, uh, it's been solid, and we're heading in the right direction. So it's, uh, it's been really nice. We had got a good restart there at the end. I had pretty good starts all day, screwed one up. Another night we had good restarts and uh, feels good, but this pitch black is actually really good right Thank now. You. Really refreshing. And you finished ahead of Chase, so you get the points today, right? Let's hope Dale uh, votes votes that way. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Casey. Yeah, Jeff said it. In the Toyota Owners 400, Carl Edwards with this move on Toyota teammate Kyle Busch of the Joe Gibbs Toyotas. Four of the top seven, including Carl Edwards, again with the win. We'll have a look in a moment. Carl Edwards led 151 laps today. That's the most. The last three races, he's led over 550 laps and back-to-back -back wins fourth straight for Joe Gibbs Toyota. And so he improves his position in the chase and it keeps it at just six drivers who have wins this year, already three multiple winners. Yeah, and Joey Logano, Kurt Busch, he could taste this win late in the going, but that last pit stop set him behind. Del Hurt Jr., Martin Tricks, these guys know time's ticking. You got to get a win soon. Kevin Harvick led 63 laps, third best, but not good enough. Jamie is with Kevin. Kevin Harvick brings it home fifth today, led 63 laps, and it seems like there was a big shift from the first half of the race maybe to the second half. How was your car there? Well, everybody on our bush light, Jimmy John's team did a, did a good job. Um, you know, we started really loose to, to start the race and, and got into the wall there, and then we had to make some more adjustments after I self-adjusted it. Uh, uh, and then, you know, we had a couple of really good runs there in the middle of the race, and, and just as we started adjusting on it, we never could get the rear drive to go along with the turn. It's kind of a balance of, of where the turn is good enough and you can still manage the drive. But um, everybody tried everything we could. We threw a lot at it and, and just never could find that. That's um, that magic balance for the car that we had there in the middle of the race. Thanks, Kevin. Sorry. Kevin's a Stewart Haas teammate and owner and driver Tony Stewart back for the first race this year off the back injury. Started 18th, got up to 14th on a on a caution, uh, lost a lap, and then wound up in the top 20. Uh, that's a great sign for Tony Stewart fans. He battled all day long. He had a flat tire, had to go to pit road. He was in the top. 20 most of the day and that's that means he can win you get a minor adjustment you get your legs under you. it was a hot sunny day today Chris he performed well and I think he's going to be tough this year yeah he was in good spirits before the race after the race caught up with Matt Yoakum a very solid effort by Tony Stewart today coming home 19th smoke at the end of the day when you go back and look what took place over the 400 laps what's going to stand out to you most about your comeback race how much fun I had in it <laughs> I mean it this place is so cool anyway. It's, it's always been my favorite racetrack. And, uh, you know, I, like we predicted, a day race, we'd be all over the racetrack. And uh, you know, that's what made it fun. Just the drivers got to, to dictate it today as far as, you know, you, you weren't just stuck in one line. You had the ability to move around and change lines. And, uh, you know, we got in a spot there with a group of five cars racing for position once. And it was fun because the five of us totally ran the track totally different. So, uh, it made it a lot of fun. We just we, we got the lap down there and, uh, you know, I got a lap down and almost drove back by him and got my lap back. But, uh, you know, Carl was strong. I knew I wasn't going to be able to hang on long. But I was going to try to hold on as long as I could and hope we got a caution. But um, just seemed like we we would get really close to being able to get that lucky dog spot back and uh, and something would happen and we'd miss it by one. So uh, just magic cautions coming out at wrong times for us. So. Uh, it was fun. I had a good time and uh, looking forward to running the rest of the year with these guys. A great comeback race for Tony Stewart. It was, Matt. It looked like a lot of fun for Stewart. Carl Edwards, the winner, but Kyle Busch, five times he has lost a cup race on a last lap pass, twice 
to teammates. That's tough. That is tough. And I mean, both those drivers drove a brilliant race. That last run was amazing. I didn't think anybody was going to touch Kyle Busch. He was just out there sailing. And as Carl Edwards said, he wasn't spinning a tire. And then on that last lap, his car just went away. He had to be a little more conservative. And boy, Carl Edwards' aggression <laughs> took advantage of it. What a great finish uh, battle, especially in that last corner to get that great finish. Carl wanted it. I mean, he wanted it. And when that white yep. flag came out, I thought his throttle stuck. He <laughs> went into turn one so deep, but it stuck. And there they went racing down the back. I got to think that uh, Kyle Busch didn't think about him giving him a bump. Their teammates, no. for heaven's sake, bumped him out of the way, won the yeah, race. Yeah, but they both have a win already, and they both That's can be right. aggressive. A great day of three and four wide racing and a wild finish. All right, well, thank you very much. Let's take a look, Michael, at the last lap. But what else could Kyle Busch have done here? He could have considered that Kyle uh, Carl Edwards was just going to be overly aggressive when he got in the corner. I think Kyle Busch went into defensive mode. He said, I've got the lead. I'm going to hold my line, and Carl won't be able to do anything with me. Carl had a different plan. Watch him run into down into turn three. He's under control, eases into the back of Kyle, gives him that bump. We know how much these tires slide around anyway. That's more bump than Kyle could handle, and then Carl drove off to victory lane. It was a dramatic finish, and our thanks to not only Carl, but Kyle Busch talking to us afterwards. Kurt Busch politely declined post-race interview. His pit crew, he lost some space earlier on that last caution. We'll have more from Richmond in just a moment.